What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 16th edition, the 16th episode, the season finale of One on One with Donovan Sharp. Of course, I'm, like I always, I always listen to myself. I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a narcissist like that. There we go. A little bit of a snafu. Um, uh, today's show is brought to you uh, by the release of Womanies Volume Three, uh, which is less than two weeks away, guys. You guys need to go to donovansharp.com/slash womanies three to get on the waiting list, or you can text girls to 313313. Limited time enrollment. It's going to be a very, very narrow window of enrollment. Uh, and again, if you if you sign up, if you're a student of Womanies Volumes 1, 2, or 3, you sign up for Womanies Volume 3, you're going to go Womanies Volume 4 at no charge. Okay, let's get this party started here, man. Uh, joining me today is the man, the myth, the legend, Coach Greg Adams. Listen, Greg, um, this everybody's been waiting on this this morning my own brother saw, shot me a text message i never hear from my brother yo you got coach greg adams coming on so listen man i think i speak for everyone here uh thank you this is this is this is an honor and a privilege uh thanks for making time for us today man thanks for uh making it happen man it's good you know, we did a couple of successful live streams but now we're in person yeah man we're doing this right man and you know what's interesting i remember um i remember the first time you and I did a live stream, it was it was because I figured out, wait a minute, I think I might have the MGTOW community wrong. Right. Because this whole time, I, I was calling MGTOWs male feminists and this and that, and somebody told me, they, they said, somebody in Coach Greg Adams' chat was calling you out and this and that and the other, and I'm like, well, why would he be doing that? He's Coach Greg Adams. And then somebody in my community said, yeah, Coach Greg Adams is a MGTOW. I was like, that guy is MGTOW? I was like, oh, okay. So that really caused me to sort of rethink what was going on. So I came on to your show, and we, like men, we we talked it out, and here we are, man. Here we are, man. Look, the, there's no house divided in masculinity. That's right. my approach on this whole thing. So a lot of guys are like, oh, don't, don't talk to them, don't talk to them. And I'm like, man, we got to realize that we're pioneers in this field. We I are. Mean, I'm in this second or third wave. Of it, there were a lot of guys way before me, but I kind of caught on to a good wave and got involved. But in the whole process, we we agree on ninety five percent of everything, and a lot of people like to point out the two or three things that we don't agree on, right? right? Yeah, and they want to blow it out of proportion. I, I get disagreements, and there's no problem with disagreements across the entire philosophy. But when it comes to dealing with men and what what they need to improve on or what they need help in, yep. I'm more focused on the 95% of things that we agree with as opposed to the factions or the tribes or any of that stuff. Good stuff. Yep. And part of the 95% that we agree on is don't be going up in these chicks raw. I think we I think we all agree on that. Uh, the Super Chat's coming in fa uh, hot and heavy. By the way, um, the, the two guys that always get the very most, how can I say, the very most questions are Kevin Samuels and recently Aaron Clary. You have more than doubled that already. Dev, we got something going on over there? What's up? Oh, I, I, I saw you bouncing up and down. You got a wire in your hand. We you anxious over there? What's going on? Okay. All right. I don't know. She looks like she's making a noose or something. I was like, what's happening here? Um, she, she watched my videos, and so she's trying to hang me on live. Oh, is that what that, it is? That agrees some get, great, that's great what it views, is. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, that's fine. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, newsflash: Donovan's girl sabotages uh, Coach Greg yeah, Adams yeah. in the uh, final chat. Yes, a lot yes. of women will be happy if they she was oh, able to pull that off Jesus on live Christ. air. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Reggie James, five dollars says, "Shout out to the offensive and de defensive coordinators together once again. Bless both of you. Shout out to the coach gang. Yeah, that's that's the way people describe you and I. Like, yeah, yeah. if we because we're both sports guys, I'm the yeah. offensive coordinator and you're the defense coordinator. I think that was a very good." analogy uh red sings the blues five dollar super chat says my donation to the sword and the shield of the manosphere there that's go. very I good like that i like yeah. that uh if it if it were not for you two um okay for whatever reason that is okay are we okay okay never mind i thought we went off the air paul angelo five dollars says east coast and west coast all the best to you thank you very much for that the Marfuki Man, $50 Super Chat, and the manufacturer of this table. This dude built this table. He's been trying to get a hold of me, but I'm bad at communicating. But he's, <laughs> so okay. He's been trying to get a hold of me to do a table. So dude. now that I know what his work is in person, I'm going to get the guy. Get with him. That is definitely okay. the guy. Uh, pull your mic a little bit closer, right, if you would. got it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we'll you don't want to. You can actually tilt it tilt. up so you don't have to crane your head over. Yep, Got you should it. be good. Yeah, Got very good. Um, yeah, $50 Super Chat. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Eric Innovator, 
7.7.2 says, this is when we shut up and pay attention, guys. Donovan and Coach are about to drop some bombs. Very good. Uh, Counselor Murray, $5, says, Coach in the building. Salute Donovan. Amazed, $5. Coach gang here. Happy to see this collaboration. Let's go. Um, so we've already set a Super Chat record for one-on-one with Donovan Sharp. Uh, oh, by the way, Devin said uh, she saw an ad already. Oh, she already saw an ad. So you're you're you're, you're our golden goose for, you go. yeah. for today. So we got plenty of questions for you. Um, but the very first question that I want to ask you is briefly take us through how you got to this point. What was the event or events in your life that caused you to take the red pill? Then, of course, start your own YouTube channel. And now we're here. OK. I mean, you know, a lot of people know about my tales through my marriage and divorce. OK. Um, Fortunately, I had an ex-wife that gave me a law school education and kept taking me back to court. <laughs> so she gave me a law school education that I paid for cheaply okay. right? uh, in comparison to what I would have paid for. But that wasn't the red pill event. Right. You know, okay. that was that wasn't it. You know, dealing with the legal system just gave me knowledge and advice. OK. The event was going back into a time where we would say the modern woman. I went I, I got married or got engaged in 2002. Right. So there was no text message. There was no social media. Right. There were no dating apps. There, there was none of that. Wow. Okay. So by the time I got uh, set, separated and divorced, there's all of that. Oh, wow. Right. So oh, that was a whole different adventure going in dating. Now, at the time, I was in great shape. I'm a fitness trainer. So going on to which, which we would call the cock carousel mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. dating apps, it was like what the, it was the Wild West. Right. So I was like, I'm learning women in a way new, uh, a way new dynamic than I did before 2002. Now, this is the event. This oh, is what boy, everybody wants to know because they're like, oh, he's just bitter. His marriage didn't work out. And now I'm like, that ain't it. Okay. It was a, it was a young girl that, uh, that, that I didn't ride the carousel with. I was like, I'm going to make a relationship work. I'm going to try again. Okay. 28-year-old uh, lawyer. She had all the – checked wow. all the boxes, the track – and so I went into simp mode for her. Right. And I'm not afraid to say it. I started simping for her and I tried to do, I tried to treat her like, you know, she was my wife. Oh. And she was telling me, you know, we're going to go there long distance and all that stuff. Okay. But she played every game. She played every game that I talk about. She gave me my red pill education. And what happened was dating her and being, you know, the age she was and being modern, what, what happened was she sent me looking for answers. Wow. On you, uh, I mean, just the internet. I didn't know anything about, I knew YouTube, but I didn't know right, anything right, about right. Uh, the red pill. So I'm looking for answers as to why she wants to go to dinner with her ex-boyfriend. I'm looking at answers why wow. she wants to go all girls nights out, but she's single. She could do whatever the hell she wants of to course. do. And I tell guys, hey, look, you, you can't control that. You can, you can only accept it or deal with it, deal with the consequences of it. And so I'm looking for answers all on, on Google. Should I be okay with these things? Should I do this? What should I do as a man? And then Tom Like has popped up. Oh, Tom that's Likas it. Video. There it is. And that changed my life forever. I mean, I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> there's men out here that think this way, right? right. That's how a lot of men come in because they go, I didn't realize there were men that thought the way I felt. Right. You know, and uh, so once I discovered that, then it was the rabbit hole, right? Oh, then yeah. It went yeah, down yeah. to everybody, oh, yeah. Sandman, and then guys like you. Right. I was sitting in my drawers on my bed crying like a lot of you guys are sitting Man, right now real trying talk. to figure out what the hell is happening to me right now in this new dynamic of relationships because I'm old school, right? Right. Well, old school don't work it today. No. And that, that's a whole different ball game. So, oh, no. So that was the event that sent me searching for answers, and then it sent me into, okay, this is the red pill. Okay. And, it, and it's, it's interesting. The fact that <clears throat> your girlfriend was engaging in activities – that caused you to go looking for answers. Right. That was your masculine instinct kicking in and telling you, okay, something isn't right, but nothing in the world is telling me that it's not right. right. Every, the world is telling me that it should be okay, but I, I'm not okay with this. Let's find out what's wrong with me. Yep. Then, of course, you run up on a guy like Tom Likas and the rest is history. Here's another thing. In the old school versus new school, I could not agree more. But I think what a lot of people need to understand, women haven't changed. Women operate, dude, women have operated under the same set of directives that their feminine firmware 
is programmed to do. What has changed is the environment. That's right. Because listen, a young pretty girl back in the 1800s, she had endless options, right? 18 years old, she had endless options. The difference is, is today she knows about them. The smartphone gives women quite literally access to anyone around the world. You can, dude, you can fly to, it doesn't matter. Like they'll fly, I mean, so you have all kinds of options and with options comes that confidence. And with that confidence, we got women doing monkey double backflips until they become a 49er and then they wake up one day and the next thing they're like, wait a minute, um, I'm 37, I'm single, I might have a drinking problem, I can't figure out why I cry for no reason and I'm just not happy. Right. You know, and I think the big, and, and this is the advantage that men have over women is that broken men can be fixed. Broken women cannot be. Right. And I think we're, we're seeing that because yep. in, in between where I got the divorce and in between I date when I dated that girl, what happened was I was... I was on Instagram putting pictures up and girls was flying in, right? Yeah, so I'm right. seeing I'm seeing what's happening, right? I'm going, okay, they have way more options. Mm-hmm. They have the smartphone, they have Instagram, yep. they can get in touch with any man they want uh any time of the day, right? Which is is much different than when we grew up and we had to go to the mall, walk up to the girl, That's get her right. number, right? And then <laughs> Get her answer machine and yes. get her to call back. You know what I'm saying? Like, she could probably pass the notes in class, yeah, right? Pass the notes, you know what I mean? Like, and then you really had to have game. Yes. Oh, um, yes. Uh, game that she didn't realize she had as many options. She could do, she can do, back in our day, she could do what she's doing maybe with three guys, four maybe tops. Maybe. If she's a seven or below, one or two, right? Right. That dynamic has changed. Oh, no. So when guys have to understand, like you said, she knows she has more options. At the end of the day, what, what guys have to understand is now you have to apply a different set of rules. Yes. A different set That's of right. rules to how you're dealing with them, knowing what they know. And those different set of rules are, and it, it's it's really a shame because let's just take it back to the 1950s, I guess the golden age, the, golden the greatest age, generation. Yeah. The things that your father told you to be, to do and be actually worked with women. Son, get a job or go to school. Yep. Um, you know, get get your education, get a, get a good job. You'll be able to marry a young, pretty girl. That dude, 10 times out of 10, that worked every yes. single time. It's not like that anymore. The problem is, is that the fathers haven't adjusted their talks with their sons. They're not, telling the, they're not telling their sons unless they're red pill fathers, and we've got questions uh, about that. Fathers aren't giving their sons red pill truth because they themselves didn't know the red pill truth. And what ends up happening is that their sons end up learning from them, their grandfathers, etc. It's a shame. This is why we get all the frustration, man. You see why we're as popular as we are because oh, yeah. we're giving men information that no one's giving them. The father, we call him uncle simp. I call yes. him uncle simp on my show. <laughs> um, That's good. They're, they're, they're not available to give them the new set of standards because right. really uncle simp is he's he married he married he has a fat wife right now yep. he can't really he can't really understand <laughs> uh what's going on with the modern woman he right. hasn't been on the field he's right. gonna talk about his 1970s and 80 days right. where he right. was a player right right right, 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 right. Like, that ain't gonna matter right now okay <laughs> and his pops you know his pops don't want to talk about all the holes he banged back in the day right because right. he's married he has a wife or whatever he doesn't want to talk about his, how he got put through child support right he there doesn't want to share that information so guys are ended up there. They're listening to women. And I'll mm. say that is where your first mistake is. Because when you're getting dating advice from women, you don't understand that she's going to always protect the interest of the unknown woman That's that right. you're trying to. It don't matter. She's not going to give you the advice to put you in a dominant position. Right. She's going to put give you advice to put you in a submissive position. That's right. That's so, right. This is why we're popular now, because we're at least giving guys options. Yeah, not only that, everyone's trying to shut us down, right? Yeah. Oh, my God, right. dude, we get flagged and, and, and yeah. stuff taken away. Yeah, this is why this is why women shouldn't take relation. This is why men or women should never take relationship advice from women. Right. Women, listen, best case scenario, best case scenario, she'll... I not even there is no best case scenario, man, because even when a woman is genuinely trying to help, she can't be honest about what it takes to be successful with women, because if she does that, she looks she looks at that as an affront on herself, because if if mothers would, would tell their sons, look, check this out. And this is interesting because Steve the Dean Williams always talks about this. A lot of moms 
they talk a bunch of junk about their uh, uh, about their baby daddy, right? Uh, oh, your baby daddy ain't this and that and the other. And then, or or in in like a traditional family, they'll talk all the junk. Oh, your father this, your father that. Okay, well then tell me where my like why did you like my father? Right, that's the point. That's there you go. Point. That's it. Yeah, because because they're uh, a single mom will traditionally try to change the man uh-huh. into the man that the father was not. However. The father was beating that peace leave up. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yes, he sir. was blowing your back out. Right. And you still want him, mm-hmm. you know, behind the scenes. <laughs> so what is it that, where, where is it that the failure is? The failure is there's a lot of men that are being taught by single mothers or women in failed relationships, and they're leading men astray. Mm. So at least we can pull them back and give them a little bit of information to arm themselves. Right. Because to be honest with you, men will take advantage of women if she lets him. That's right. And women will take advantage of men if you let her. It, it, that's just how the game works. This is Seriously. something that Rolo Tomasi says. <clears throat> Sexual strategies for men and women in this day and age are such that if the male sexual strategy works, it is at the expense of a woman. And if yep. the female sexual strategy works, it is at the expense of men. It shouldn't be like that. Right. It should be sort of, it should be a cooperative thing, but the girl power movement has made the girl power movement has created, I guess the first winner, the winner loser dynamic back in the forties and fifties, right. everybody used to win. Girls were submissive. Guys were dominant. Everybody loved each other. Everybody was great. It was a win win. But now as a man, in order for you to win, the, the women have to lose and vice versa. I think that's sad, man. It's sad. I think, but in, or, when, when the dynamic is man wins and, and woman doesn't, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, that's how the communities were built and they thrive. Right. Right. That's how you can organize a community. Now, if you have the, in the reverse, you have disorganization and chaos, right? right? You're never going to build a community on the woman wins and the man loses. You're not going to have parks and soccer nope. games and and nice little fi- – you're not going to have any of that. Buildings, Buildings iPhones. IPhone, it's all gone. <laughs> it, it collapses. And here's the deal, guys. If you're if you're not from our generation, you missed. Yes. You, you, oh you just God. missed out. I'm just letting you know because you are able to get a lot of sex now, yes. which is that's what we didn't have. Right. Unless you were the top 20 percent guy. Right. However, however, you're getting dysfunction and chaos Ooh. as a result. Man, oh and man. that's right now throwing the marketplace off. Now, maybe maybe I don't know, maybe in 70 out of 100 years, there'll be an adjustment for this. Yeah, maybe because we're adjusting through a lot of chaos right now. Yeah, it's right? overcorrection. It's, it's overcorrection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so maybe it adjusts and they find a happy medium. I don't think so. I think society and communities collapse. Okay. As a result of this going on too long. I think it has to. It has, it, to, it, it right. has to in order for it to over It's almost like and not to get political here, right. but if you look at the political spectrum for the last uh, uh 30 40 years, right? Yep. Um we keep overcorrecting, right? On everything, dude. On everything. On everything. So first, there was, first there was Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter, he is the dude. He is he's the worst president ever, but he's probably the greatest human being who ever served, right? Yeah, right. So then there was Ronald Reagan. Had a little bit more. T- Mikhail Gorbachev, tear down your wall. I, I think that's probably yeah, that's wrong. Yeah. So then then there was uh, then there was Ronald Reagan. Well, Reagan Reagan was in ter- he was in office for two terms. Then we got George Herbert Walker Bush. So now we have three straight Republican White Houses. Yeah. We corrected to Bill Clinton, who is more the other way, yeah, right? Very progressive. Very, very progressive. Right. So we overcorrected to George W. Bush. George right. W. Bush was in for eight years. Then we overcorrected <laughs> to right. Obama. Yep. Eight years of that. And then we had Donald Trump. Yeah, it, right. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, way dude, back. Yeah. Over, yeah. dude, it keeps going. And, yeah. like, the pendulum is going to keep swinging in such a way that things are going to have to collapse if things, if we want, if things are going to get better. It's going to get, it's going to well, have to get worse. It's got to get, gotta get way better. worse. And, guys, we're almost in that position right we now. almost we're are almost man are. i mean i mean and it's exponential right like i keep yeah. thinking i'll be dead and buried by the time we hit rock bottom i don't know man i well, might listen, actually be alive there's things that have happened that you never thought would happen in your lifetime black oh. president black oh, president yes. right you know what right. i mean like we never like in our never thought that out, like that will never happen okay it nope. happened okay right. so right. now now we're talking about you know kind of this socialism communist mm-hmm. people adapting to that we talked about getting Peace leave easy as, as easy as pie. Right. You know what I mean? There's things that have happened in our lifetime that we would never thought would have happened, but that's because of all of this overcorrection. Yep. But I think over time, uh, you see more polarization. You see yep. more people saying, I'm on this side or on this side, and less uh, moderate people. Yeah. And what that's going to do is that's going to create chaos every time there's a new president, that's new, right. new administration. But in terms of what women do, is that they're agents of the state. Now, That's right. Yes, they're, they're they are. to the state. They're married to the state in every way. They seek protection from them. They seek governance from them. And they 
their only use for men now is procreation. That's it. And fun. Right. Um, what what's gonna happen from here? That's that's the that's gonna that's be the, the next million question. dollar question. Yeah, million I dollar listen. Question. I don't know. Um, wow, fifteen hundred and sixty five people watching. That is that is double the amount of people that has ever watched my show. So I gotta have you in here uh, yeah, more let's often. Go let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. And, uh, AJ Taylor five dollars says shout out to the two guys who introduced me into the Red Pill philosophy. Appreciate the work you guys do. Quarterback and receiver on the field. Um, I think you're probably the quarterback, and I'm the receiver because I'm a little crazier than you are. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's how Take that them, goes. You got to run them slant rounds. Yeah, yeah, man. I like yeah. going over the middle. Yeah, I'm that dude that seeks that. Okay, yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, amazed. Uh, Two dollars says, uh, "Let's go." Uh, Christopher Tejada, as it skips. I hate when. You, oh, okay, here we go. Christopher Tejada says, "Mr. Adams, do you think it's a turnoff to women when you don't have social media?" I don't like to give mine out to avoid them finding stuff. Uh, Chris, we're going to answer that. At, we're going to answer that when we start answering questions. Yours will be the first question we answer. I'm going to take a screen grab of that. We'll come back to that in a second. Red Pill Mike with a $100 super chat says, uh, most women will shame men who have dealt with women and learn from it. The more women that men deal with, the more we learn about their true nature. The only knowledge, wi- the only knowledge women learn from excessive notch count is how to manipulate men while never improving status. This guy needs his own YouTube channel. He, I don't know why he doesn't. Dude. I don't know why he doesn't. So you doesn't. know who he is, too? I know who he is. Dude, yeah, he, it's unbelievable. He should get started. He's un- he's unbelievable. Yeah. He's going to be at my event. Okay. He's yeah, going to be yeah. at my event. Uh, Avid Hiker, $50. Wow, they're coming in hot and heavy. You, uh, you guys are my favorite Red Pill content creators. Thanks for the wisdom and the guidance you provide. Much appreciated. VMAD, $10, says straight up Red Pill OG Gangsta Party. Okay, so we're gangsters now, all right? Thomas Payne, welcome to Chat Privileges. Appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Joshua, $5, says Coach Gang here. I recently started watching your content, Donovan. I see why they call you guys the offensive and defensive coordinators. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Very good. Uh, to your point, uh, Chris Von Eric, $10, says to your point, Donovan, uh, at best, a female dating coach will tell you her idea of a perfect guy, but not the guy who turns her on. Kudos mm. to Coach Greg. Love his content as well. That's a very, that's actually very, uh, very astute observation ken rose five dollars says a man taking relationship advice from a woman is like a lion asking a deer how to hunt another deer very good amos brown 75 dollars says you guys uh, you you guys content spans race incomes class status good work guys that's one thing that a lot of people have said about us is that uh, when you know black youtubers have mainly a black audience but guys like us we sort of we we tend to sort of cross over why do you think that is i think that we approach i you know what, and we take shots for not doing that. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's that's what people have to understand. That's right. <laughs> a lot of times, uh, black people will look at celebrities and people kind of achieving something mm-hmm. as a as a uh, as a voice, right? That's right. And they'll say, "Well, good. Now you're there. Represent us." They do that with actors, professional yes. athletes, and everything. Wow. So what what I typically do, and I've set up my show from this from the beginning, and I think I would thank MGTOW for that, mm-hmm. is because it never was about race on that side, right? Right. So. Right. It was never like, I mean, you can make issues here and there, which is fine. But when I set up the show, it was never being, okay, I'm going to just speak from the black MGTO perspective. I'm going to welcome everybody. And the reason why I did that is because it wasn't just to get a bigger following. I just thought it wasn't necessary for me to bring that there. I mean, it was like we're talking about men and women issue. And the minute I bring in race, now I split the audience. It's kind of the same with politics. I mean, red pill is politics but a lot of times when you bring in politics say you bring in sports right you're okay. an eagles fan yeah right now you just took the audience and you dice it up into uh 130 seconds right seconds so now they're gonna be in your comment section talking about the eagles so i would rather focus on just the one issue and okay. then if i every now and then i can adjust inject race into it maybe i can help but there are racial components but one right. thing about the red pill community and this encompasses the red pill MGTOW, and all that other kind of stuff is that it transcends race when we say all women are like that it's not all white girls not all black women no all american western australian um british all women are like that right and black men have exact now there might be certain elements certain cultural elements that might be a little bit different as far as the nuance but guess what uh you know Shanika who is dating the drug dealer Taekwon is just like Becky who's dating the you know the alpha bad boy with the motorcycle yeah. it's a little bit different but it's it, the it's, same it's much the same and i i um i went to three high schools so my first high school was i went to three high schools too you, man yeah i went to high school every freshman sophomore junior and then Holy i went moly. to the last two so uh God. all three were completely different demographics. Okay. So my freshman year, um, I went to a school that was Hispanic, black, 
I mean, we were very diverse, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, they everybody kind of split into their factions. And then the second, uh, the, se- the last two schools were like 99% white. Oh. Right? So I'm in the suburbs. So. Oh, wow. What happened was I got to understand and be in relationships and that. Yeah, man. Like some some guys have never left Chicago, inner city, right? They've never left Alabama, so they really think that it's just black women. Right? Yes, you know what I mean, right? Like they, because that's all they dealt with, of course. You know, except the pork rind fat white girl that they deal with that comes from the right, track, right, right. That comes over the every tracks every once in a while, right? Like, oh right. my, I got I got a snow bunny, right? Right, right. Her, like like that's a snow elephant, you know? That's, <laughs> that's a that's snowman. Snow yeah, that's a snowman. <laughs> but but I think what happens is when you deal with different races. Or especially early on in life, you just realize, yo, that's women, right? Yeah. It's American women right. that we're talking about. It's not just, and so I think from that perspective and that experience, I can I can speak on it from a whole bunch of different racial issues as opposed not to. Not only, it's, it's interesting because, I and the reason I keep uh, gyrating over here is because every once in a while I'll get a, um, I get abdominal cramps, so I have to, I have to make my belly big to stretch that out. But but uh, I went to three high schools as well. Yep. The first high school I went to was in Hawaii. The second high school I went to was in Oklahoma. And the third high school I went to was in North Carolina. And I was raised on military bases. Oh, I have seen, dude, I've been to, dude, I've been to 40 something states. I've lived in 19. I've been to yep. every country around the world. That's another and because thing. of that, it just gives you perspective. Like you tend to understand things that 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 most people, spe- specifically black men, really can't understand. Now, when 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 brothers watch us, it it normally tends to go one of two ways. Oh man, I like what these guys are doing. Let's latch on to these guys. These guys have done and 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 seen things that I haven't. Let's try to get those experience. Then there's the other side that says, oh, you know these uh, you know these guys are sellouts, Uncle Toms, and blah 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 blah. Those guys are what I the, those guys I say belong to Nigatube, right? <laughs> With black people on YouTube, black people. Listen, brothers either want to get educated or they want to get entertained. That's what it is. Right. You come here to be educated. If you want to be entertained, there are plenty of other there are plenty of other YouTube channels to entertain you. But and listen, you and I can be very entertaining, but that's right. not that's not the main that's not the that's main not the reason main why we do this. Yeah. No, it, it is to educate. And there's a lot of black YouTube guys that are red pill that got that covered, right? Yeah. I didn't yes. think I needed another another voice to that and I added a distinct voice that was more encompassing. But yeah. as you can see, though, a lot of times if you say, say, let's just take it out of the black and say there was a white YouTube guy. He was talking about men's issues and he said, I'm only talking to the white guys. Right. Well, now he just limited himself. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. so anytime you want to grow or you see people passing you up. Right. And oh that's what God. happens. People see other people passing people up, and then they start saying, oh, he's passing me up. Why? Oh, because he's a sellout, Uncle Tom. He there won't sell. Go. I'm like, look, man, that, you do what you want to do. If you want to do it to 13% of your audience right. and talk about 13% of the women, have at it. Yes. But I'm not going to do it. Here's a here's another reason why I haven't reached out. You're not that good, yeah. right? <laughs> like, has it like has it ever occurred to you that the reason why you're not? And I'm not saying that to slight anybody, right? But everybody thinks they can do what we do, man. Like it just. Like, yeah. I, listen, man, there's nothing special about me, man. Right. Okay, so I've smashed more chicks than the average man, and I'm a maniac when it comes to focus and all that. Yeah. But this ain't for everybody. Right. And, there, you know, guys think that if they have a, a, a smartphone and an opinion, they think they can be a YouTube star. And when they, you know, when they've been doing it for six months or whatever, and they figure out, well, well wait a minute, there's got to be, work. if Donovan can do it, he makes it look so weird. Well, why can't I do it? And that's when the haters come Well, in. there's only a few people that can get away with that. AMS did it with the oh phone. Oh, my God. You know he's saying? the, yo, no he's the king. Yeah, he's the king. <laughs> so he made it look easy. But yes, he he's did. AMS, right? Right, so, right, right. You know, he he was uh, able to do it without production. Right. Without. Uh, that's his brand. That's I can't brand. imagine him on a set. Like, right. AMS has got to be no, on that camera. He's done phone. a couple live streams, and oh. it's not the same. It's not the same. You know what I mean? Like, AMS I sold out. Yeah, AMS, not, you yeah. sold out. No, but, but I think, he, you know, he's in a situation where he's like, I got to expand, mm-hmm. which is great. I mean, I've talked to him about this stuff, that's too. Good. He's got to expand. Yeah. And I think he wants to expand genuinely. So. What, what happens, though, with other people is they think, OK, I'm going to do what he did and I'm going to reduplicate that. But I'm going to tell you something. You said people think this is easy. Dude, if you realize, I mean, I have a regular job. OK. I have two kids that I have uh, oh, part time custody of and, and, they, and they're in sports and I'm shuffling them around and they're in school and, and all this stuff. And I'm doing the shoot two stuff. I'm working 16 out. I mean, oh. nonstop doing this uploading, production, choosing songs. 
I mean, wow. I mean, it takes a lot of work to. So you do don't this. sleep? Is that what you're saying? I mean, when I do, <laughs> when I'm when I sleep, I'm usually done or waiting for something to get done. Oh, process, there you, you go. Know what I'm saying, and then I'll go to sleep and I will wake up and then repeating this process. So it takes a lot. You have to really, in order to make it, and I know that I don't want to make this about, hey, how to be a successful right. you know, content creator, but first and foremost, you have to be good at what you do. Yeah, right. Guess what, Greg? There are guys out here that know more than you and I ever will, yeah. but they can't necessarily teach it, right? right. That's, like, that's the difference. If you can teach, if you can convey your knowledge in such a way that benefits other people, make it digestible, you can then be successful. That's the first thing that has to be taken care of. The second thing that has to be the th the second thing you have to do is you have to continually hone your craft. You have to you have to try to get better and better all the time. Like like you said, AMS is an anomaly, man. Like yeah, he's right. never going to happen again. But and a lot of people think AMS. Well, he just came out of nowhere. He didn't come out of nowhere. No. Listen, people people saw his meteoric rise very quickly, but a lot went into that. Yep his knowledge and now he's on the money side he's telling people how to how to um uh, how to uh, uh i guess concentrate on their finances so he's delving into territories that no one had ever thought of before that's why he's where he's at exactly and i think a lot of people will see where you know they'll they'll see where a person is and then they'll try to duplicate that process they'll yes. start doing live streams i'm yep. gonna do live streams too because coach adam's doing five days a week and i'm like bruh you know what i started off doing five to eight minute video there you go Five to eight minutes, just pan, bam, pound them out, and I did it every day. There you go. Until there was a following. And okay. you got to do it until, you know, I start off with 500 subscribers. Mm -hmm. I had an old basketball channel. It was just basketball video. Oh, that's cool. And I took that channel, and then I changed I never changed the name. That's why it's Coach Greg Adams. Oh, so a lot of people that's are like, where that came from. Okay. So that was the name of the basketball channel. How about that? And little so, uh, yeah. little uh, 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 Greg Stuff Adams. People don't know. Yeah. yeah. Origin yeah. story there. Yeah. All right. Let me read off these super tests and we'll get into the questions here. Blue Collar Mindset, $10. Says Coach Gang, member in here representing. Looking forward to the show. Free agent lifestyle always. Jason Moreno, $10. Says on the first collab, I was the first guy on the line that waited an hour and a half to speak with you guys. Both of you, both of you have had such a big influence. I can't say thank you enough. Appreciate that, man. Quarantino to God. I always say that, God. Beware of women of $10. Says, beware of women who don't have social media as well because they may have attempted to delete their digital footprint because of their toxic past. Hashtag stay woke. Man, I hadn't thought about that. See, that's what, that's all. I've been, I've been, I have been out of the game for a while. Well, so. see, guys like that, mm -hmm. these are the young guys that yeah. are coming up, right? So they, they know stuff and they're experiencing things Woo. that we haven't even had to deal with yet. I'm trying to tell you, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, single fathers, $15 says, love the content. Never believe what she says. Go by her actions and that will tell you everything. I'll take it a step further. Sometimes you can't even trust the actions of a woman. Dude, but listen, don't believe anything you, don't believe anything you hear. Believe only half of what you see. Yeah. Uh, ben RP says, just adding to the pot. Keep up the co a great content, brother. $10. Camera, boy, these are coming in. These are flying in. We have over 2,000 people watching. Guys, please hit the like button. I'm actually going to keep this up on YouTube because you are Mr. Clean when it comes to there the... Yeah, Minister Jap couldn't really do that with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Chemister, Camster Mail. Email. Oh, Camster, Camster email. email. Okay. Yeah. I'm illiterate today. Says, uh, just here to donate... Uh, shout out to coach uh, to the coach and Don to heavyweights. Uh, Maximus twenty dollars says coach gang in the house. Good to see you two brothers having this dialogue. Definitely getting some knowledge in on this Saturday. Uh, Mister C twenty dollars says much continued success to the both of you. Dan ten Canadian dollars says finding the red pill has literally changed my life as a man. I started with Tom Likas, uh, just like Coach Greg Adams did. One million thanks to red pill content creators. Thanks Donovan Sharp. Corrado with the 10 British pounds, the CGA and Donovan put me on game. I was lost, flunked college and pandemic took my job. Now I've opened my company, gotten a job too, and focused on what is right. 23 and free agent lifestyle forever. Very good. I like to hear about the young guys who are, who hear about this stuff, man. Saves yeah. them a world of hurt. Oh, for sure. James Young, $50. says CGA, good to see you. Both of you are helping generations of upcoming young men who need the knowledge that wasn't properly taught by the men in our past. Halo Strike, $50, says showing support. Shout out to the 49ers and Uncle Sims. <laughs> Zanatos Clutch, $5, says shout out to the guy who almost single-handedly redeemed the MGTOW label. A lot of them were seen as glorified incels before Greg Adams took over. That's where I want to start with the questions. Um, and this comes from one of my patrons. He wants to know what are the subtle differences between MGTOW and Red Pill philosophies? Uh, what is the cost-benefit analysis, uh, analysis of pursuing each? So 
in your opinion, what's really the main difference between the MGTOW community and the Red Pill community? I just think the call to action is different. Call, okay. The call to action. So any okay. anything you're selling has to have a call to action. It has to make the person jump to it and say, I, I want to purchase that. So okay. um, in the red pill philosophy, I think that is all encompassing. That's the umbrella, right? Yeah, right. Um, but some people will just say, hey, I'm, I'm red pill. But the minute you say I'm MGTOW, ah. well, then you inherit a, a, an, an entire philosophy of other things that you, you might just pick and choose from a couple of those things, right? Okay, right. But, but people think, you know, they can think what they want to think. They automatically believe you're swearing off sex forever. You're going to live in a cave. Right. You're going to wear a hood around. That's you're what totally I thought. You're going to totally isolate yourself. That's what I thought, yeah. You hate women. You know, they start, which is fine. I say you can put whatever labels that you think you heard from another MGTOW mm -hmm, guy. Mm -hmm. But the purpose of MGTOW, it says men going their own way. Right. So I can have any philosophy inside of MGTOW that I want. Okay. Right. So yeah, I can sense. say, all right, I'll take from this, you know, these uh Reese pieces, all the little Reese pieces. Mm -hmm. I'll take these things and I'm gonna ride with MGTOW. Okay. But I'm gonna separate these things, which is fine. You could do that because it's your own way. So there's no leader. Right. Right. There's it's decentralized. No person, yeah, yeah, it's decentralized. So there's no one person that you can say is the the leader of it. And I'm not the leader of it. I'm certainly not. There's people that know more about it than me. Sure. But what what I learned from it was when I when I was listening to you, when I was listening to all these other people developing the ideas that I want to, it was the MGTOW people that were saying, don't marry. Okay. You know what and I mean? that's what spoke to you. The, okay, and I, that makes and that's sense. what I said. I'm going to do that. Okay. Right. Out of all the things. Like, I didn't need game. Right. Right. And right. you were more like game and dom, mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, that's not where I am in my life. I'm sitting in my drawers and I'm wondering why my girlfriend is sitting there eating dinner with, a, with her ex. With her ex. Right. 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 Do right. I need game? Well, I mean, game probably could have worked. But right now, I've already put myself in a position like, okay, I need to really evaluate my life. Okay. Right. My life isn't about getting tail anymore. Mm -hmm. My life isn't about, you know, um, trying to find a wife. My life was about where's my life going? Right. And that's where the free agent lifestyle kind of came in. And I think that helped my channel uh, because uh, people were just saying he's MGTOW. Yeah. And I right. said, you know what? I need to have another philosophy inside okay. of that. That's where he came up with the free agent lifestyle. Yeah. Okay, that makes so sense. now people that come to my channel, they can say, oh, it's not just MGTOW. Right. And I'm not just MG. Like, like, <laughs> right. Because they, they, they're listening to me. It's like, I don't want none of that. Right. Well, then if I say, all right, this is a tendency of free agent lifestyle. Now they go, ah, I'm yes. good with I that. like that. I yeah, right, that, right, right. Right. And so they can make their own philosophy within that. This was, this was my, this was my mistake. And, and listen, to be fair, it wasn't all my fault, but the quote unquote leaders of the MGTOW, the MGTOW community were guys like uh, Sandman, who is right. very knowledgeable, and Turd Flinging Monkey. Those two guys are as knowledgeable as anybody out there. Right. Like when you listen to these guys, I mean, even now, I'm still blown away yeah. by the things that they say because I'm like, wow, these guys are taking it to the next level. Yeah. But Turd Flinging Monkey is in a relationship with an inanimate object. He is married to a sex doll named Celestina. <laughs> If that's what he wants to do, that is perfectly. And the fact that I know her name, that's really not. Yeah, not, right, not, yeah not, listen. A... But who's paying attention? But when 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 the average man who finds the red pill community, if turd flinging monkey is the first guy they're exposed right. to, they're like, oh my. Well, that was the first MGTOW that I knew of. I was like, well, yeah. who are these MIG? Say, I was red pill forever. Then I was like, who are these MGTOWs? Yeah. MGTOW. Oh, there's Turd Fling Monkey. Okay. Oh, he doesn't show his face. All right, fine. I understand that. Then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This guy is in a relationship with a sex doll? I decided to leave it alone. Right. Well, I remember one time I, I put something on Twitter about what it takes to be good with today's women. And TFM responded that he's like, well, until you get your wallet ripped out of your ass and da 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 and I'm like, dude, like same team, man, like same team, like it is what it is. And so he says, well, you're eventually going to get got blah, 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 blah. I responded, yes, yeah, says the guy who's fucking a sex doll. I said, don't come to me and, and tell me that you're brave for leaving the dating market to be in a relationship with a sex doll. That's what sort of caused us to butt heads. I ended up absolutely frying him on YouTube. I'm ashamed of it. Even though I really won, I fried this guy. I shouldn't have done it because that yeah. you know, that's just you, you, friendly fire is never good for anybody. But that what that did was that cemented in my mind. Okay, anybody who's labeled a MGTOW has got to be like TFM. Then I went on and I talked about the movie Joker and about how they were worried about how guys who identified with this were going to get violent. 
That's when I went off on MGTOWs and someone on your channel uh, came to my chat and said, wait a minute, somebody in Coach Greg Adams and this and that and the other. And I said, wait a minute, that guy's a MGTOW? And that's when it completely changed. I was like, there's no way. I had to see for myself. Sure enough, there it was. And that's what that's what opened my, that's why I was like, dude, I got to reach out to this guy because clearly I've been mistaken about something. It was, it was, it was, it was insane, man. Well, insane. I think what, one thing that um, I think guys that, choose that philosophy mm -hmm. i mean honestly just speaking of a guy that i mean it's as a guy that has seen its growth in the first you know in the last five years i would say if they were more secure in their decision to be mgtow mm -hmm. nothing would affect them right okay but i think what happens is when they take that route if anyone throws shots at them and they say well you're going to be like the the sex doll guy right well then if they're insecure about their choice or being labeled then this is when they lash out Right. Oh, yeah, that makes and sense. And so yeah. I'm always telling guys, look, man, look, the minute you get the dominance that you want in your life is when you get secure in your decision making. Yeah. yeah. I'm going, look, there's nothing wrong with being MGTOW and saying, I still sleep with women over here. Yeah, I do live right. my life. I don't have to explain myself. But I think one of the mistakes that I made was trying to be the flag bearer of it. Okay. And if anybody took shots, then all of a sudden they were like, hey, go to his channel. He's talking mess about them. And after a while, I said, you know what? I'm not going to keep defending it because I'm secure in my position. Right, right. He can say whatever he wants to say, but doesn't mean that he's talking about me. Right. And that's just, you know. I think it, I think a lot of it I think a lot of it just had to do with miscommunication and misunderstanding. And at the end of the day, we might disagree on a few things here or there, yep. but we all agree on the fundamentals, right? Feminism is bad. Use a condom. Yeah. Don't get sperm jacked. You know, divorce courts are heavily, 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 heavily yeah. biased towards uh, towards women. Um, let me read out these. These super chats are flying in. Um, give me a second. Oh. Red Pill Mike, $5, says the only actions of woman you can trust are the actions of a woman who feels she has your commitment. The true actions of woman are transparent then. Okay. Uh, Isidore Calderon, $20, says, do you think free agents should be considered separate from MGTOW? That's an interesting question. Oh, well, I just talked about it. I think okay. what happened was, you know, if you if you have a guy that says, I'm still playing the field, right? right? Well, then if he just thinks of the MGTOW umbrella, he would automatically say, I'm swearing off sex, right? right? Right, And so if I say, oh, free agent lifestyle, then they will be more apt to be upset, uh, accepting of the philosophy because he could still go out there and do whatever he wants with women, right? Oh, right. As long as he doesn't get married, cohabitate. There you go. And then long-term relationship. Right, gotcha. Right. And I'm an exception to the rule. I am, I'm, in a, I'm in a cohabitating relationship. And yeah, I understand that that comes with risk, but that's a risk that I'm willing to take. And well, I that's have what it's about. Things. But that's what about, that's masculinity. Sure. Right. right. So that that's the other label that we have. To, there's all these labels oh about God, me. Yeah. So, but you know, but it's that's the masculinity. Truth. That's yeah. what that is. You, you accept your decision. And then you're securing your decision. Mm -hmm. You understand the risk, and then you, then you thrive or whatever. You right. Take the, you know, you take the risk or the reward. After right. The, yeah. Yeah. If the, if if the reward outweighs the risk, then and if and we're men, we're very good at risk. Assessment. But there's not many rewards that outweigh the risk today. No, not today. Because you're dealing. You're an you're an older guy. Yeah. You're not dealing with the marketplace of women <laughs> that these guys are now coming up with now. I'm so very it's fortunate. Different, right? Yeah. Not that Dev is a unicorn or a right. snowflake, but I got I got lucky with her in that she sought me out because she was in a bad place. Like things that she was doing wasn't working, and all the rest of that. Let me go back to Christopher Tahada's five dollar question. He says, "Mr. Adams, do you think it's a turnoff to women when you don't have social media? I don't like to give mine out to avoid them finding out stuff. That's an interesting question. Yeah, what are you trying to avoid? I think um, you know." If you don't have social media, you're just going to restrict your uh, available women to 30%. Yep. Right? Because they're all going to investigate you. Yes. Every single one. Man, I had a girl over. I didn't tell her what my name was, but I have a degree sitting on my wall oh, in wow. my bedroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? And she saw the name. Look me up there. Oh. So they're going to find a way to of investigate course, you, of you know what I mean? And then she found, oh, I saw your YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. Right? And so there's they're always going to want to investigate you. Whatever you do, um, whatever decision you make in life, just know, understand you're going to restrict your your available women. That's right. And you're right. You're going to restrict them uh, increasingly. Okay, very good. Um, Dev, uh, we had a patron, uh, Patreon question about uh, the red pill and fatherhood. What was that? 
What are the three things a Crimson Capsule Aware Father can do to successfully parent? Wow, that's a good question. Yeah, like I mean, how do you do? How, so yeah. how? I don't want you to give too much proprietary information, but right. your kids are teenagers. Teenagers, yeah. And boy, are they boys, girls? I have boys? a girl and a boy. Oh my god! So yeah. what do you, do, dude? What do you do? Like how do you do it? I can't even imagine, <laughs> man. I can't imagine uh, raising a young daughter. In today's world, right? It, it, dude, let me tell you something. Bruh. I mean, because not only am I around my kids, I'm around their friends. Oh, that's right. right. That's so right. Their teammates, and I get to see the kids and all of this stuff. I see their social media. Some of right? them, some of their friends follow me on social media. What? Right? Yeah, it's, it's, so oh, my whole God. How does that go over with mom um, and dad? Nobody really says anything. My, I mean, there's some women in the community that I dealt with at my at their previous school that okay. found out about my stuff, and they okay. tried to go to the school district. They literally tried to go to the school. District. Are you kidding? Yeah, they tried. To go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they went to the principal's office, and then yeah. the principal was like, "His kids don't even go to school here anymore. What the hell are we gonna do?" So, yeah. Um, so, but other than that, people treat me. They don't care. You know, I live in a community of really wealthy people. Okay. Do you think they're worried about? My YouTube channel, you know what I'm saying. These people YouTube got no channel, time man. for that. Yeah, but but the Karens. Of, yeah, the yeah, the, but the but in terms of uh, raising kids today, you guys got to understand that this social media is going to influence them significantly. Yes, and and when you turn your kids over to the public school indoctrination camp, to social media and all of these things, right. it's going to be problematic for you because my kids, ha they're already talking about this politics thing. They've already chosen sides. What? They've already been like, oh, I'm Republican. Oh, I'm Democrat. And they're both, yo. You don't and know anything. Like, yeah. You don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, and the, and the most logical, and you would, you would, when you understand the politics, you can see why each other chose to side. Of course. You go, right. yeah, right. I can see. I can totally see why you would be with the side. And then him, I can totally see why you'd be with the side. <laughs> and, and with that, I say this is exactly why. You know, I can see it right in here. I say, yeah. I, it's just a microcosm of society. Yeah. And I go, here it is, right here in front of me. Everything that I believe about the politics that's how influential, is right there. That's how influential social media is. You can look at your kids and be like, yep, I can see why you think this way, and I can see why you think that way. And one follows YouTube, and one's on TikTok. What do you think they're going to – Oh, you, you know what I'm saying? And so wow. one follow looks at YouTube mostly, one looks at TikTok mostly, and you can see exactly why they align where they align. Good God, man. Um, dude, Devin has a – she's 12, 12-year-old 12 niece – She's got a 12-year-old niece, and she comes over, I don't know, two, three times a week because her sister drops her off and she goes to work sometimes. We'll just have her over. And she's getting to that age where I'm starting to care about her. You know what I mean? And it's it's a little bit scary, but she's a good kid. But I think to myself, how, how is this going to, like, how is this going to work? I just, I can't even imagine, man. I can't man, imagine. Man, just know, just real quick, just know when you send your daughter out. My daughter's teen. She's going to yeah, be in college yeah. in a couple of years. Uh, you have to give them as much information as you can, you can to make sure that they understand that uh, beauty, their beauty is going to lead, mm -hmm. not that degree. All right. Yeah, so that's right. Make sure you don't get fat after, you know, of all things in the first, uh, you know, four years of your sexual marketplace value. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to these women talk about your degree. Don't listen to them. So if you ever want, but see relationships, and this is for fathers. If you have daughters, you're never going to marry them off. Just understand that. Okay. The likelihood of you marrying your daughter off is slim and none and yeah, slim just man. die in, in today's age. Yeah. So with that knowledge, just prepare yourself financially to be ready to support them because okay. they're going to lose their tails out yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, they they're are. They're going to ride the carousel to 28. Yeah. Dude, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm, we'll get back to the questions. Yeah. On my car ride over here, <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had an attractive driver. Yeah. Okay. Pick me up. And we just got to talking real quick. It was a short ride, but yeah. we got into it real quick. Uh, what was her issue? She's like, oh, I didn't think I would be in this place in life. And I said, <laughs> here we go. You know, listen, a lot of things we say can be certainly, we can find it immediately. Sure. And so I said, how old are you? And she said, I'm 43. Now, wow. she was attractive, blonde, fit. Yeah. I mean, she wasn't ugly. Right. She, I would say she was an eight easily. Wow. An eight easily okay and she was like you know it's hard to find a job she she going through everything that we say you right, know what i'm right, saying right. i'm sitting here like damn and so it's and everywhere it's, it's everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. she says give me your honest opinion because she's talking about she can't she she doesn't want to date anybody under 37 okay right but uh Nor anybody that, right exactly yeah, right right as a, as a female but you know not older than 50 right so i'm sitting there like okay so anyway the point of it was was that she was frustrated 
that men don't want her at 43. There you go. And she was attractive, dude. And I'm sitting here She going, looked good, man. I yeah, looked in the window. Her? I saw she, her. She I was like, okay, yeah. wow. Like, yeah, who yeah. Is this? She yeah. wasn't ugly. Right. And I'm sitting here going, she's dealing with the same. Same issue that I talk about all of these, and and she's attractive. It's in your face all the time. And I'm but, like, and these women never like. There is proof <laughs> all around women that feminism has lied, lied to, to you, you and, and they continue to double down. It's beyond me until they run out of time. And then I'm sitting there going like, and I'm looking at her. I said, if you're 43 and you're dealing with this, what are the ugly women? Oh, <laughs> you know, dealing with I'm like, What are you? I mean, so again, she basically validated. My entire oh, yeah. channel yeah. in a five minute ride. Unbelievable, man! Wow! Shout out to Michelle, the uh, Uber driver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll leave her a uh, I'll leave her a decent Give her tip. A tip. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave her a decent tip. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is for your man over there. Uh, the no expert, another fifty dollars says, "I'm grateful to you both for your content while I was healing from a breakup last year." Please enjoy the tip, gentlemen. The great first milestone for young men is when you stop looking at women and start watching them. Talk to y'all soon. Very well said. Good stop point. Stop looking at women yeah. and start actually watching them. Um, dude, these super chats are coming in hot and heavy. Johnny Bravo, $50, says, You two have been the biggest influences in my red pill journey. I can't thank you two enough for everything you guys do. This is the collaboration to watch as we have 2,400 people watching us now. Um, gentlemen, these two dudes are the absolute best. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Thank you. Hold the truth hostage. Five dollars says Red Pill has a price that, and that's to be excluded from the masses marching toward the trap known as the Blue Pill Illusion, known as happiness and slavery. Wow. Yeah, he's deep. He's got yeah, a man. channel coming up. Yeah, yeah man. I'll tell you what. Um, Warhammer two dollars says two of my favorites. I can't thank you all enough. Phoenix Fats, he's a patron of mine, says with the playbook, the OC and the DC team, the Red Pill, the Red Pill wrote, we should dominate and shut out our opposition with ease. Yeah, I'd say that game is probably like what forty-five to three, something like that. <laughs> I, I see you giving up a field goal, but yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it's almost. Um, we're almost unbeatable. I'm, I'm not yeah, pulling right. the quarterback in the third quarter. Yeah, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, yeah, I'm leaving him out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazed, five dollars says Red Pill is truly the umbrella philosophy, and everything else is a branch. It is the truth. Kings and vagabonds find relatable. The Red Pill is the truth. Wow, very good question. Uh, very good uh, super chat. James Young, five dollars says the difference between society and the Red Pill is that society keeps a man down. The Red Pill allows a man to ascend to heights despite that. Dis uh, that despite society. Very good. Uh, VEJ48, $5. Uh, I appreciate that. Here's the next question. Um, this comes from one, of my, uh, uh, from one of my patrons. He says, Coach, for any MGTOWs who have no family or kids and little to no friends, who are some good people to register as your emergency contact slash power of attorney? This is a growing concern of mine as I have no children or family and no serious relationships with my peers. I'm unsure if he was trustworthy to bestow such responsibility with these when these situations inevitably come. That's a good question. Yeah, man. he says he has no family, no cousins, no he doesn't nieces. trust anybody. Yeah. Okay, he doesn't trust anybody. I guess he's kind of I guess circle. he really is kind of a monk, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Well, this is when your network, all right. Uh I, and I talk about networking for for men okay. as a as a way to ascend to to heights that other men who don't network Okay. We'll never ascend to. So um, you will meet people in business that are business minded. Okay. That you can use as mentors. Find a mentor. Find ah, a coach. Oh, there we go. And those are the people that will, you can be able to assist you in that. That's what I would say. Okay. Okay. Very, a very good question. A very good answer. I would, I wouldn't know. This is why I'm glad that I put these questions out there because I would not have known how to. Great questions, man. man I'm telling great, you. Yeah. Intelligent audiences. Uh, JS Felder, $10 super chats. Uh, coach and Don Damage, the Titans of the Red Pill. Appreciate both of you, brothers. I got five on it for both of y'all. Don Damage is my adult film star name that I've been given by the community. <laughs> Novi2000, $10, says, thanks for the great show, guys. Please contrast your cohabit... Oh, please contrast your cohabitation philosophies. This is a very good question. So I am in a cohabitating relationship, but I didn't... I did not allow Dev to move in with me for a year and a half. Um, I vetted and trained her for one and a half years before I moved in with her, and we've been together ever since. Have I mean, we've definitely had some bumps in the road there. I mean, no relationship is perfect, but it has served it has served both of us so well that she she quit her job. She now works for me. She gets a paycheck and everything, and now we're taking this thing to new heights. So my philosophy on cohabitation is this. You shouldn't do it, okay? Um, and I'm not going to sit here and say that there are days where I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, why do I live with this woman? I'm like ready to pull my hair out. But the risks for now outweigh the rewards. 
And the only time, I, I don't know, I can't imagine, I can't imagine today's woman being so gung-ho about what you're doing as a man that she's willing to quit her job and help you do it. And even then, I don't recommend moving in. A lot of guys say, well, Donovan and Rolo say, don't get married and don't move in with women, but Donovan lives with his girlfriend and Rolo's been married for 20 years. So what gives? Well, you're not Donovan and you're not Rolo. And what you, also, what you have to also understand is that uh, is that we have the, um, having, having relations with a lot of women teaches you how to handle them. It teaches you abundance. That abundance is what I brought into this relationship. So I can do and say things that most guys wouldn't normally do. Devin has a choice. She can either stay or she can leave. Either way, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be totally okay. So what is your philosophy on cohabitation as it is here in 2020? Well to understand what cohabitation is to to that person, you have to understand yep. the man that's gonna cohabitate, mm -hmm. right? So you understand the man that you are and what yep. your needs are and what the woman is that you're gonna move in with, right? right. I'm gonna tell you ninety nine percent of men don't understand that. Wow, yeah. So yeah. they're gonna be in a situation where they even move in with the woman, like where they move into her domicile, oh. which I say is the one thing oh you God. do not do. Don't do it. All right. That, <laughs> if, if anything, she's moving in with you. Right. right? Make so you sure your name is on that deed. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. Don't, and so people do stupid things like put her yes. on the title. I mean, oh. uh, they put the down. Dude, there's guys that are doing ridiculously dumb things and this is why i say <laughs> it's best for you not to do it you're gonna end up knocking her up because you oh. guys are doing your raw sex thing and you think it's cool what you're in with you're in six months in uh right before that lease oh comes up god and she goes, now you're stuck now, you, now, now you're stuck oh. and you got six, uh 18 years of child support so i know guys are not in their right mind when they do it right so like even if i did it i, I would still suggest that you don't do it because right. you're not in a power position but at this point in my life, there's no benefit other than the one that you said that I actually wish I had was if a person would actually be helping and assisting yeah, me. Right. Okay. Then I would go, hmm. All right. Now the modern woman. All right. No, th that's like, that's like impossible to find. Oh my God. To be able to do that. And to their credit, I would say, sure. I wouldn't, you know, I'm, I'm taking a major gamble by a major risk by employing you. Right. Number one. Right. And then I have to, keep that going so if you gave up your career and then i failed well then that would be on me right so okay. i get why she wouldn't do it mm -hmm. but there would be a major benefit if i had a teammate to do it i'm telling you right now man um i talk all the time about how women aren't necessary and this and that and the other they're not necessary for a man's you know success or happiness but if you if not if you find the right one because there is no right one there is the one if you find a woman who's willing to follow your lead and is willing to stay in line the benefits are innumerable man right. I would have gotten to this point with or without Dev but I'm probably at this point maybe a year and a half two years from now right this is another thing that a lot of people probably don't realize is one of the reasons I chose Dev was not just because she's physically attractive, but it's also because she has, I think like a decade and a half, dude, since she's 20 years old, internet marketing and internet building. Wow. She's been working, like she's been working, dude, she builds websites. She she knows how to code. Oh, All of those things, like I had the foresight, okay, if this thing, this thing has the potential to get serious, if it does, mm -hmm. then I can use her in that way. And here we are now four and a half, almost five years later, and now we've got this. That is the only, that's the, that's the only way. So if you do cohabitate, boys and girls, for, for the boys, make sure the lease is in your name, number one. Do not put her name on the lease so that you can kick her out at any time. Dude, either get a vasectomy or tell her to get, you get the vasectomy. She's not getting her she tubes tied. Yeah. I can't think of anything else that would keep you yeah, out of trouble. Yeah, right. Make yeah. sure you're not in a, make sure you're in a state. And there's, it, listen, it's no accident that we're in a, in a non, what do they call that? Common law marriage. Oh, no. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah there's right. no common law marriage in PA and there's also no common law marriage in Nevada. Like, so it's not, those aren't accidents. So just make sure if you are in a non common law marriage state, get snipped or use condoms. Don't let her handle the condoms. Make sure your name and only your name is on the lease deed. That's the best I can do. Right. There's, there's, preca there's precautions you could take to limit, limit the damage that could come most likely come. But uh, again, I would not do it with the career woman. Mm -mm. She's running her job. She's coming home. Uh, you know, I cannot do that. There, no. There's no nope. way in hell mm -mm. that that is an attractive offer to nope. me. And that's, 70, 80% of women. 
There you go. So that that mean guys don't like those numbers when I tell guys that. I say you gotta eliminate 90% of women. Well, how am I gonna get peace lead? Bro, you can find two or three that's gonna right. do your damn thing, right. right? For a limited time offer, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your limited time. Just limited know, time only. No, this is a limited time offer. Right, right, and right. it could be uh uh eight weeks or it could be five years. Yeah, Who knows? Right. But but if you're going to open this whole thing up to 100% of women and then you're going to keep going out there and get disappointed, disappointed, bro, man. I'm telling you, man, you playing the wrong game. <laughs> this is not <laughs> Limited it. time only. Limited time Listen, only. Listen, I say this at the top of my show. A woman never belongs to you. It's just your turn. Then yeah. guys say, what about Devin Donovan? Yeah, it's just, listen, I love Devin. Yeah. She's, she's a big part of my life and I value my relationship with her. But if she were to decide to up and leave, I'm okay. Right. I'd be bummed for a few days, but I'm sure. going to be all right. right. And you want to know something? It shouldn't be that way. I shouldn't, I shouldn't, like my, my girl is sitting here right here. I shouldn't have to in this day and age say, listen, if my girl leaves, I'm going to be okay. But having had the experience that I have, this is the mentality that you have to have. You want to know why? Because I've cried over girls leaving me before. Exactly, yeah. I ain't got no more tears, man. I'm like Mary J. I ain't got no more tears. Exactly. Man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Adam Smith, Adam Smith Von Hayek. $5 says Donovan's tips made me lose 35 pounds. Coach's tips helped me increase by, oh, more than 100K this year, my net worth, and take a new job for more payer benefits. Huh, good Absolutely. job out of him. Uh, Tora Warrior with, I think Devin just sent me the, okay, so um, uh, it looks like he sent me uh, 10 New Zealand dollars, which is uh, the pound sterling, thir $13 super chat. Appreciate that. Says a thousand thank yous to Donovan, Coach Greg, and Dr. BOA for your fantastic content creation. I now have masculine. I now have masculine with my nine-year relationship with my Filipino wife. Red pill is essential to all men. Appreciate that. Um, Trutino says at Coach Greg Adams. Speaking of kids, can you tell the story of how your daughter wanted her breakfast made, but your son made his own? That's interesting. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I teach both of them to be self-sufficient. Of course. Right. 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 And so, uh, you know, for even before they were. You know, eye level, I told them how to turn on the, the, the pilot. Oh, wow. Eggs, I mean, scramble eggs. Okay. Put the bacon in, and I'm always telling them how to cook. And uh, even my daughter was like, oh, how come you're only telling me to cook? I was like, no, I make sure both of them are <laughs> Oh, so yeah, she was yeah, already she, coming yeah, at you oh, like yeah, that. They okay. always try to, yo, you think about <laughs> SHIT testing, man, she will throw something at you. She keep, Dude, you know, listen, little toes. girls, I tell you she what, keep, man. Because they're finding, they're trying to find out a way yeah. to get their advantage. But Real talk. what happened was... <laughs> My my son gets up. He he goes to scramble his eggs, and sure damn enough, all right, here she comes downstairs. All right, like where's mine? He's like, you better get your own. <laughs> <laughs> and she did she eat breakfast that day? Nope, she oh, she didn't get her own. Me. So, um, she's getting better at that now. Okay, you know that dude. Kids mature so like they crazy, do, man. Like they fast. Really do. So, very good, good story. That's funny. Um, Erno uh, Horvath, ten pounds says loving both of you. Being the brother and father we never had, ever thought ever thought about how most women show sociopathic tendencies and traits, no remorse, calculated, no accountability. They tick most boxes. Yeah. I would agree. Uh, Technomage B5, $120 super chats is late to the party because of work. Just showing respect to Coach Gre to Greg and Donovan for all the work they've done. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uncomfortable truth as it flashes off my screen. Man, these things are coming in hot. Just supporting two of the best in this matrix we are in. Appreciate that. Enigma WPG with the five Canadian dollars says, respect, guys. Fantastic collab. A mountain of knowledge in studio. Kevin Samuels is in the house. The $5 super chat. Dude, nobody breaks down these ain't shit bitches live and in per, like in real time like Kevin does. You ever watch him, dude? Man, I'm going to tell you, like a lot of people are like, you know, they come to my channel. Oh, don't be this guy. Don't be that guy. But, you know, when when you watch what he's doing, <laughs> I'm like, I, surgical, can't, I could man. not do it. I would, <laughs> I I would fall doesn't. flat on my face because they're live. Yo. Like running a live stream is one thing because sure. he has production. Yeah. Uh, I have production. You have production. Being able to do that. And now you got some delusional broad on the other line live <laughs> testing you and he's the, undefeated the part man where he goes you know he he plays the like the taps you yeah know? right right right, right. <laughs> and so i'm sitting there going yo he's got it down and that's why he's growing dude nobody does it like him, he can man. do it like that so dude yeah, i, I just, couldn't do it, it the, the, the thing about kevin is that <laughs> i don't know how he does this but he always he's he always knows the next three questions to yeah. ask yeah. no matter what they it's 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 almost like he 
he forces them to he forces them to lie about themselves right. to not I don't know how well, he does it. Look, look, the one the one thing that happens is he understands like not a lot of un- men understand that a woman's lying to you, right? Like yes. when she, when they come on these shows, they're spinning tales, of right? Course, now, of course. Now most men are afraid to ask the hard Woo! question. Uh oh. And so when he goes in there, he'll let them say something, and he'll come back to that because <laughs> one girl was on there talking about um. She had a degree and graduated, right? Right. And so he asked her, just to set her up, uh, did you graduate with that degree, right? Okay. And so she said, I have a degree, or I went to college. She says, I went to college. Oh, right? I, see, and I then wouldn't he, have caught and that. He, I and then that. she was talking about, yeah, I'm educated and all this stuff. And he said, you know, did you graduate? And he let her hang herself on that. Oh, my God. Because then later on. It, 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 you know, you could tell that the, <laughs> I would next have never couple of that. Questions, the next couple of questions, now all of a sudden she had hung herself in that lie. Now, everything you said after that, you just invalidated everything because you're a liar. He, and dude, he, he, he can is ask unbelievable. Questions. Listen, Kevin, Kevin Samuels is single handedly, he is the, he, he, he single handedly is responsible for my sleep deprivation because I'm trying <laughs> to get to bed. I'm an old man. I'm trying to get to bed by 10 o'clock. Right. But if right before I want to go to bed, I say, oh, Damn, Kevin's on. All right, I'm only going to watch for 10 minutes. 45 minutes later, yeah. Devin and I are sitting there looking at the phone, laughing at whatever chick he's frying. So <laughs> shout out to Kevin Samuels, man. Uh, d- dude, nobody does it like he does. There is no. There are plenty of guys who do what you and I do. Right. Nobody does what Kevin and does. He found that lane. He's he's good at it. I think he's going to be on TV, man. A oh, guy, right, I, right, I, right, think, right. I think he could be the first one of us to break into... He could break into mainstream media because there is. But he's no, already he's already drawn that attention, man. Like from from people off YouTube. Yes, right. Yeah, and they're saying his name and 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 that's great. I think it's great for him. Yeah, because I think one one thing that I will worry about is that um, you're you're eventually going to get women that watch my stuff and your yes. stuff, right? That come from him. Yeah, and then they'll target us. Right, right. right. So that was that's the only thing that I worry about. Right. But other than that. If he takes off, I'm I'm glad when guys come in, dude, and take off. I I'm love never it, jealous. I'm never mad. I, no. I love when a guy was stagnant and then he found his lane. I, I love that. Everybody wins because Everybody when wins. Like, yep. because when mainstream media, dude, Doctor Phil reached out to me two three months ago. Exactly. One of his assistants said, "Hey, we'd like to have you on the show," and I gave him the finger. I was like, "You serious? You yeah. think I'm stupid enough to fall for that? Get out of here!" But. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, shout out to Kev. Nobody does it like he does. Uh, Medi Naha with the two, four, six euros says, thanks for the great conversation. Those are all separate super chats. <laughs> uh, Black, uh, Black and Travel, $5 says, you both helped me walk away from a post wall succubus. Paying my dues to King Don and Master Greg. Appreciate that. Daryl Davis, $10 says, in cohabitation relationship, in cohabitation relationship, and I'm about to buy a house and she big mad that she plays no part in the purchase, about to graduate college too for occupational therapy assistant and blue collar too. If she don't put He's in doing a it damn right. dime, don't put her Mm-mm. on a damn thing. No, That's hell no. Clip, pretty simple. Listen, man, every every woman wants to be every woman wants to be on the deed, but nobody wants to be no one's no one wants to pay the deed price, exactly right? right. Um, Madman, $10, says, if you do get a vasectomy, make sure you don't tell her unless you intend to get serious work with her. Keep them in the dark unless vital. This is why I advise guys, man, if you get a vasectomy, don't tell women you have a vasectomy. Because if you do, you're less of a man in their eyes. Right. Because part of the impulsive sexual nature of women is that danger. <gasps> he could get me pregnant. It's not like they want to, but that's just part of their firmware. Oh my God, he's right. he's 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 firing with, with, with live bullets. That's what makes it more exciting. But right. if you're sitting there banging her and she's like, okay, well... He's yeah. not using a condom Even and if, nothing could happen. Then I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of takes the danger out of it. Um, James Young, another five dollars says Kevin was in sales for a long time. The best salesperson knows which questions and what order to ask them in. Yeah. Very good. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Samuels was not sales. Kevin in sales. I just picked a random name, Kevin in sales, Kevin the sales. guy who sleeps with everybody's girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If there, there's uh, there's Kevin in sales, then Dave, the unemployed garage band guitar player who may or may not live in his best friend's van. Um, Takeem Hilton. Says, in here supporting you both. Great content from both Coach Greg Adams and Donovan Sharp are the best. Dev's doing a great job, too. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. Red Pill Mike, another $5 super chat. This is incredible. Uh, 2,500 people watching said, Red Pill won't stick. I'm sorry. Red Pill won't stop going after KS, and he has cooked her into ashes multiple times. Real talk, man. Yeah. True Black, $20, says, just want to welcome CGA to the East Coast. I know you don't. I know you don't drink. So Donovan and I are going to do these shots. Thanks for all of your content. Oh, you don't drink. So I guess we're just going to do the uh, tomahawk steak. 
uh, tonight. Um, another question from one of my patrons. Uh, we already... So, um, here's another question. I think it was the same guy. He says, for any older childless MGTOWs, what is your take on... What is your take on marrying or becoming a domestic partner with a widow whose children are fully grown and mostly independent? A prenup would be essential. It's just better to have one than not, even if it would be thrown out. Uh, but just for security reasons and to have a reliable uh, a reliable person with a good relationship established in your final years, it seems beneficial. I'm not looking for love. I'm looking for respect and dependability. Any thoughts or concerns? Thanks a lot, Coach. This is the same guy who talked about not having friends or family. So it sounds like he might be afraid to die alone. Could be. I think that might be what it is because it sounds like he's a little older. He's well to do, and he's like, "Okay, I live this great life, but I want someone to share it with," which is perfectly natural. So, what's your advice to him? I would just say, just understand the scenario. Everything can change. Yeah. So, yeah, you're gonna get that if you're later in life. You're gonna want that, and I get guys that don't have kids and all that. That's a lot of people ask me that. Sure. So you get to this point in life where you have the wealth, you have the stability, but you want companionship. Yeah. Um, and you're willing to roll the dice in this you situation. Go. You're there willing you to roll the dice. Just, just realize, I understand, but you're gambling, and if you don't understand you're gambling, right. that's when you lose big. There right? you go. But if you're going to go in there, take all the precautionary steps, um, just realize this, and, and this is why single mothers are dangerous no matter mm. how old the kids are. That's right. Because if that kid falls on hard time, and you, you moved in with that widow, and that kid falls on hard times, or her mom falls on hard times, or whatever happens. Right. You know where they're coming to live? At your house. There you go. That's they're it. To, now you're there, on the hook for that. Now you're on the hook. Now, does that change your thought process? Could that change your thought process? It will for I think me. It probably would. Yes, it would it absolutely will for me. For me. Like, oh, hell no, they're not moving in. Now what? That just put uh, uh, that just put a, a arrow through your relationship. A lot of guys seem to be asking, well, what if... What if she's a single mother through no fault of her own? What if her husband died in the line of duty? To that, I would say, listen, my heart bleeds for you. Like, I, listen, I'm sorry your husband got blown up, you know, on, when he was deployed. I'm sorry that he was killed in the line of in the line of duty. Not my problem. Like, my heart goes out to you, but a single mom is a single mom is a single mom, man. Just because just because she is just because she was widowed doesn't mean she doesn't still have the same of uh, the same objectives. Right. Here's another thing. A lot of single, a lot of women understand that guys, men of value, are staying away from single moms. So what they're what they're trying to do is they're they're increasingly telling men, yeah, my husband died or my husband was killed in the line of duty, and that's just a lie. Well, that I think the the widowed children, I mean the children of the widowed mom, right? They're more dangerous than mm. than all the rest of the kids, wow, right? That's because incredible. because that those kids were around at a very steep emotional time mm -hmm. to that mom. And listen again, I'm I'm sympathetic for your sorry for your loss, right? But I think the children had to somehow process uh, uh, and be available to that mom emotionally. There you go. And that mom leaned heavily on those kids. Sometimes those kids don't detach from that mom, and then if you're with her, then they become part of you. Yeah, you're gonna if you don't want them to be part of you, then don't do it. But if you say, well, I'll take that risk. Okay, well. When, when they fail in life and what young kids are, right? when they don't make it, just like my Uber driver, I didn't think I would be here at age 43. <laughs> there you are. So deal with it. There you now, go. Now, what about at age 40 when her kid gets divorced? Oh, Bang. Wow. Now that man's in your garage. Woo! In your wow. Man, dude, you got to think. You got to think far. I would advanced. never have thought about that. And so that that man is going to move in with you. He has nowhere else to go. Oh my god, that's crazy, dude! I would never have thought about that. Devin is actually kind of an exception to that rule. Devin's father was killed when she was only eight months old. Mm. Yeah, and it, dude, the circumstances were it was absolutely crazy. It happened. I think it happened in Miami. So that tells you all you need to know there. And so Devin's mom had to dude. She had to pull herself up by her bootstraps. And soon after, she found. Uh, she found it. Uh, she found uh, married another guy, and this was, dude. This was just maybe a year, year and a half later. They had two more children together, mm. dude. Big, uh, dude. One's a freaking six four alpha Chad. Uh, he's a great looking guy. Charter fishing in Florida and goes fishing in Alaska. Every dude, every girl wants him. Yeah. Her other brother is a brainiac because they're like six degrees in botany and bugs. Is just a freaking genius. He's a doctor. Oh yeah, he's a doctor. He's, he's a doctor. like a double doctor. doctor yeah, yeah. yeah. Super smart. I just got just got married though. Okay. 
Okay, well, just got married. Oh man, they've been together for like eight years. Oh, so. see, here we go. There we go. See that? <laughs> see that? The red pill staring me right in the face. Even the, 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 dude, my own woman. Yeah, yeah. See, but but, but wait a minute. He's my, d- 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 Hey, I've seen I've hey, seen people smart. I've seen people get divorced in all situations. They knew each other for two days. Yeah. They got married. They knew each other for ten years. They, yeah. Yo, real talk. There's no look. The laws <laughs> when they start applying to you and you go in the family court, the judge never says, "Oh, but you knew each other for eight right. years." They never <laughs> say, they never they never pull out that exception that never came right, out. Right, well, right, let right, me adjust right, the right. funds accordingly. Right. Nope. They or, say or yeah, when yeah. she's about to when she's about to start doing monkey double backflips with the dude at work. Before, well, you know what? I have known this guy for 12 yeah, years or since I was a teenager. <laughs> no. no. They never take those things into consideration when they about to do you dirty. Listen, so, her sister-in-law, listen, yeah. she's a lovely young woman. She really is. Right. But all women are like that, gentlemen. Um, hopefully, I wish your brother wish him success. Best. But yeah, yeah, tell him to tune into my channel. DonovanSharp.com yeah, right. for your boy and uh, GregAdams1.com. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was funny because like, and, and again, I mean, listen, we pick fun, but right. it, this is just like, like men and women, like women aren't bad. They just are. They just operate under the same set of set of rules. Well, look, they, there she the was right there. Of, well, it's my brother's wife. They've no, okay. All right. Yeah. Like I mean, that's well, they what think it is. Different, they think differently than us. Cause we're different. Everybody's trying to make us the same and right. equal. The reality is they think this way. And we think this way. We think about mounting them. They think about lying on their back. There you I go. I mean, we're completely <laughs> right. different people. So, right. look, the, the reality is that what makes us di- what makes the um, dynamics different mm-hmm. is we're bigger and stronger, right? There you go. So now that settles most arguments. But when they are agents of the state, now they bring up that, that the equalizer. So That's 72 like a- hours, that mandatory 72 <laughs> hours, right? Yeah, yeah. So you got to understand the dynamics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Men and women are different. I, I yeah. think that – I think that's uh, – I think that's – uh, uh, obvious. Yeah. Um, oh, Amar Kermani has an interesting question. He says, what is the best advice for a man who works at a liberal university as a faculty and wants to keep his red pill beliefs? I'm going to answer this one first. Shut up. If you value your job, <laughs> shut up. Don't yeah. be, listen, don't be spitting red pill truth out here in these streets, man. What's your advice? Well, it's just like uh, you said, if a man gets a vasectomy, don't tell the woman. Right. I would say the same thing about the red pill. Yeah, right. Why would I tell a woman like that I'm meeting and trying to get to know or whatever that I know what the hell she's about to do before mm-hmm. she do it? <laughs> like, like, like I would just watch her and be like, yep, You're about I know to do that this. is. Yep. Yep. I know, I'm, like you said, Kevin Samuels is three yes, steps sir. ahead of him. I'm three steps ahead of every woman that I, that I deal with. That's and right. It's only a matter of time before she catches up to them three steps and what's the three steps ahead of that. So for him, just just watch these people yes and you're gonna be like in awe but you're gonna be prepared yes yes yeah, yeah. don't don't <laughs> don't try to red pill your friends yeah, don't know now everybody at the school no if they say hey you've been watching coach greg adams oh and that's it they'll be like just to be like who yeah just don't be like, why is why is security <laughs> does somebody call to get yo as yeah, soon as you in with the box <laughs> i tell people don't watch my show at work man like well, yeah, don't get fired sure. yeah. like you will be in the hr's you will be in in, in hr sooner or later yeah um Fernando Vargas, $50, says, appreciate what you guys do. You're not that Fernando Vargas, are you? Is that the fighter? Was he a fighter? That's the only person I know. Yes, that's That'd the guy, cool. Fernando I Vargas. Mean, a lot of people watch us. Fernando yeah. Vargas, if this really is you, you took the De La Hoya fight way too early, man. If you wait, dude, if you wait two years, if you wait two years, you spanked De La Hoya. You took that fight too soon. You were the never the same. He was never the same after that. Don King gave him some money then, oh, I guess, God, or somebody. Dude, Don King, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised somebody hasn't rubbed it out yet. Right. Uh, James Young, $5, says, being with a single mom is simply asking for trouble. Stay away, as the gentleman said. That's right. Maximus, $20, says, the landscape gets worse and worse by the day, brothers. Most women today, uh, most women today will not let you lead them even if it can save their life. They even double down when they see the positive outcomes of your advice. One told me it was luck. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is incredible. Man, they, the, the modern woman is insufferable. There's no <sighs> possible way that I would engage with one seriously. No. Uh-uh. I mean, and, and if I did, the, the woman's got to be like on her last leg in 50 or, <laughs> or 18. There ain't nothing in between. <laughs> like, there ain't nothing in between right. all of that that I would deal with seriously. No, I'm I'm yeah. I'm with you 100 percent on that, man. Uh, Maximus, another five dollars says, and that girl is still in a lot of debt today. <laughs> Free agent lifestyle. Okay. Uh, James Young, five dollars says CGA is on point about the family court. The worst ones are the judges who are biased against them. It's not worth it. We actually have a question, Dev, that is along the lines of the uh, uh, the court. So, what was that question? Talk about the masculine frame in divorce court. 
coach has me in stitches when he does that. So I talk so what's about, that all about? You know, what happened is I talk about masculine frame as people use that as a means. Okay, this is how you stay on top of your woman. Right, right. So right. I said, uh, you know, you, you try that masculine frame out with the bailiff. You know, you yeah. go into the court. <laughs> you're like, uh, <laughs> judge, uh, can you give me a second? Bailiff, stand down. I want to hold masculine frame against my ex-wife. Yeah. Let's see where that's going to get you. I'll yeah, allow it, yeah, but I'll tread carefully. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Be careful out here. Boy, they go, they go have you tied up. Over, Man. Bit, over the table. So this is what I, you know, I get the idea of masculine frame. I, I get it. But what you guys are dealing with is a dynamic of, again, agents of the state. These right. women, just look at how they voted in this last election and in 2019, particularly if you want to say black women. Yeah. I mean, the whatever that percentage is of black women that voted Democrat, that's the ones I ain't dealing with. There you go. Right. I, I would just take them completely off the table because their their governance is them. Yes. Not, right. Not you. Right. And they always are going to walk lockstep with that. And because it allows them to be trifling with their lives. Yes. Right. That's all right. There, there's always going to be a rescue plan um, when they vote that way. And that's why they vote that way. So um, people put that out. I hear people go on dating apps and they, the women are saying no Trump supporters. I'm like, that is an indication of the type of woman she is. That's right. She's telling you flat out Dude. what she's going to bring to you and who she's aligned with. Not you. Yes. So, I mean, there's easy red flags, more red flags than a Chinese parade to, to ferret out. Sure. And that's one of them. If they're leaning towards any liberal minded ideology, you're done. Just just give it up. If just you see it. that and you get with her and she plays you, that's on you. Yeah, you messed because up. these listen, these <laughs> women are out here telling you who and what they are. Yes. But you're committing to them anyway. But then when you get played, you want to come and whine to us about, oh, bitches ain't. Well, listen, yeah. you are right, but you already knew. I, like, you can't. Listen, you get played by a woman, then you find the red pill. I get your gripe. Yep. You do what you got to do. But if you're out here with this knowledge, making those same mistakes, I can't help you. Dude, There's I nothing I can do. I just did a video about that uh, live stream where I'll say, look, it's 2020 from now on, guys. I'm not blaming women no more. There you go. We've been That's doing it. this for five plus yes. years. It's on you if you keep doing these dumb mistakes. You go. I, every time you come to my channel from 2021 on and say, man, in 2019, I got into a relationship with this woman, and she had this red flag, this one, this one, this one, this one. Oh I overlooked God. it, and I'm like, yo, that's your dumb ass fault. Man, I, yo, unbelievable, you, dude. Men are stupid, though, because they only think about the peace league, right? <sighs> and then they want to ask questions later dude, after they bust. No. Check this out. And listen, that. no shade on this dude. He's a part of my community. But I, I do a Sunday webinar every every Sunday. And this guy, I don't know how long he's followed me, but he gets on. He's like, hey, Donovan, I got a situation for you. I'm like, all right, what's going on? He's like, well, he said, I'm, uh, he said, I'm here trying to get my green card, right? Okay. And he says, when I deal with women, he said, I let them know off rip. Look, I'm trying to get married to get my green card. I said, okay, listen, you shouldn't do that right. in the first place because you are giving them power over you. Yeah. But let's, we'll get back to that later. So he said, okay, what's the situation? Now he said, well, I was in a long distance relationship with this woman who is a single mother and I told her I'm trying to get a green card. I said, okay, so what's the issue? We now live together. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, why? And so I asked him, I wanted to get to the root of the problem. I said, okay, let's, and I, I try not to be judgmental because what's done is done. I don't want to be the father who tells his pregnant 14 year old daughter, you shouldn't have had se right. Yeah, what's done like, is done, right? Yeah. Like we all know. So I said, okay, let's, let's take this from the top. I said, were you sleeping with any other girls? Because at that point, the only reason why you would move a single mother all the way from across the country to, to live with you is because you weren't getting any peace sleep. Right. He said, no, I was, I was, uh, I was sleeping with two other girls. I said, you're a fucking liar. There is no way on God's green earth that you're banging two chicks on the side, but you move a single mother cross country to be with you. Surprise, surprise. Now she ain't acting right. She didn't want to have sex. She has an <laughs> attitude problem. And now her five-year-old son is out of pocket. Jeez. Here's what I advise this guy to do. I told yeah. him, I said, check this out. You are going to take, if you want to get out of this, you are going to take some serious monetary, monetary and collateral damage. Yep. The only way out of this clean is if when she's not home, and, I, and she doesn't have a job either. Oh. The only way out of this is when she's not home. I don't know when that is. You grab a suitcase and you get out of there. Because if you tell her, hey, look, um, I kind of want to break up. Dude, she's calling ICE. She's calling the cops. <laughs> exactly. He, Dude, he diddled my little boy. He he abused me. Yes. You are in a no-win situation. But here's the thing. This guy, he's been, I think he said he, he'd been aware about the red pill for two, three years. 
this is what we're dealing with. And I'm not trying to bag on the guy, but what are you like? What are what are you doing? I can't blame her for that because if I'm a single mom, I'm taking that deal too, right? That's what guys don't get. Every aye, time aye, you aye. make all these exceptions, they're winning. Yes, they they, they win. You bail them out. Jesus you bail them out. Christ. So don't don't be mad. Right. But but you got to grab your balls. And like yep. you said, get out. If your lease got four months, just just lose that. Break money. it. Break, just that, break lease. that lease or whatever. Just take that loss. Financial loss It's better than the loss you're going to take when you come in and say and you give her a warning. He has taken the L. You but cannot do. I said the only way you get out of this clean is if you just Houdini out of there. She can't know where you are. No, she can't know. None he, of that. Yeah, she, he doesn't he doesn't have any legal or she doesn't have any legal ties to him. Like they're not married. Yeah, that's right. not his kid. Right. Just get the hell out. Yeah, yeah that's just, all you got to do, yeah. man. Because if you give her a warning, she's calling ICE and the leave cops. Leave the furniture you bought. Dude, leave all, all of that. that. I told yeah, them, you're going to have yeah, to leave, leave all of that, man. Yeah. I said, her, I'm sure her little five-year-old son will enjoy your furniture. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I hope I hope I see that guy again and just let him know, dude, what are you doing? Ay, ay, ay. Um, give me a second here. Oh, Larry Portis, $5, says, these agents of the state have more spies than the CIA. <laughs> Stay away from For sure. Me. Dude, that's he, good. No lies. Uh, Tom A twenty dollars says I dated this woman for five years, and she would complain about everything. I offered legitimate ways to fix the situation. She snapped on me and said I said she was just venting, didn't need my help. Learned that lesson a decade ago. What are your thoughts about that? Women who complain, and then when you because we're men, we're fixers, right? If someone, man or woman, complains, my leg hurts. Okay, well let's get you some icy hot. Get you a bed. Well, I just wanted to vent. What are your thoughts on that? Well, she's signaling something. Yes. Either there's another man in the picture, potentially a better offer. Maybe. She's signaling that she's upset that she settled for you. Ooh. She's signaling she's signaling something that she's never going to be honest with you about. Yes. You just got fi- you either got to sit around and figure that out uh, because she doesn't want you to fix the problem. No. Right? Because as no. soon as you do, you ever hear like those dam, like the cartoon, like there, there's a dam up and the water's like forcing through the dam. Okay. And it comes through a little part and then the cartoon character yeah, yeah, plugs yeah. it. All right. Then there's another one. Oh, yeah, right. Got to put it, his got toe got up. Then he's like, <laughs> not, now you drown. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. there's only a matter of time where you can't, you can't plug any more holes. Right. And as soon as you fix w- the one hole she's complaining about, you're going to find out there's another one. It's the 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 problems that she's bringing you are not problems. There you go. There's something else in the picture, her in the picture. Uh, maybe her family's struggling financially. Maybe she's likely lost. a better offer, just a like better you said. offer. Another, yep. yeah. She's the coworkers showing her attention. Oh my god, that's Kevin what's going on. Kevin and sales. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I like that. That was a, that was a good analogy with the plug into the holes. Yeah, she doesn't really have a problem. Yeah, you're the problem, but she can't flat out tell you because women that's can right. never be straight up about anything. They're never going to be straight up. And no, that, but that's not a look. That's not who they are, right? That's not who they are. Right. It's not a bad thing. It's something that you have to accept. Everything they are, you just got to accept it for what it is. That's and right. And realize, what are you going to do about it? There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Dude, I agree with that 100%. And a lot of people, like a lot of my detractors, like said, oh, Donovan has Devin under lock and key, and he thinks he has full. No. I don't control, like as men, you don't control women, right? And people ask me this all the time. Donovan, how can I get my girl to do X, Y, Z? No. You can't control them. You can control your responses to her behaviors. Case in point, if she decide if if she goes out to bars or clubs, then you wi- now this is of course before you're dating, you withdraw your attention, right? Why haven't I heard from him for the last three days, right? Now she's going to disingenuously ask you why you haven't been talking to her for three days. You're gonna play dumb. Ah, I've just been busy. Okay, all right. She already knows. Women know. They, know. they already know. They know. And as soon as you get, and this is this is what women do. They ask you, why are you treating me? Why are you not treating me like a princess? Why are you not paying attention to me anymore? If you tell them exactly why, she's got you. Because now she's going to be like a lawyer. She's going to be, well, it's, the, it, it, it's this excuse. And that, listen, right. my old woman does it to me. Yeah. Every, and it's it's so funny. It, and and when, like, right in the middle of it, I'm like, damn it, I did it again. Yeah, like, yeah, here yeah, we go. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll have to stop myself and be like, look, Dev, that's the end of this discussion. Don't do it again. And that's that. So that's just how that is. But you don't give women ultimatums. You give them choices. When it comes to the people, and guys always say, well, Donovan, you always told guys not to have their women on social media. How can I get my girl to stay off social media? Uh, Number one, if she's your girl and she's on social media already, that relationship is destined to end. So beforehand, you make it clear to her, I don't date women who are on social media. 
That's how you do that. Well, what if she tells me she doesn't date guys who are on social media? Then you've done it wrong, my friend. Right. It's dude. It's a whole process. But the point is, is, is I, men should not want to control women. Control yourself, control your behaviors, and have the discipline to have those same behaviors to the things you don't want. That's how that goes, man. Well, the 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 control part of it, realize you, you can't control them. All no. Right? These, are, these are children with breasts for the most part. Yes, that's right. They're, they're going to try to find every other way to manipulate you. And like you said, if you give them the ammunition, I'm mad at you because, well, yeah. guess what? You just gave them the ammunition to manipulate you, and I they know to how God. to get, get uh, needle you. But the control you have is to be able to walk away. There you go. That is where the control is. And there before you, you commit, you got significant control. Yes. Okay. Yes. You got, oh, I don't date women with so social media. And then she can mouth off or she can delete it. Well, if she mouths off and you haven't committed, you go keep on walking. There you go. I'm going to have my social media. Okay. Well, bye. Cool. You know what I mean, right. like, yeah. I'm the, not mad at you. Yeah, like, have it. You know, have at it. Th but, this is the yeah, thing. Right. If, 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 and this always comes back to the social media thing, the, bar, the my three pillars. I don't date women who go to bars or clubs. I do not date women who text their ex-boyfriends, and I do not date women who go to bars or clubs. You said that one twice. So I think it was social media. Social media. Okay. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. <clears throat> now, now, girls, women will say, well, Donovan, she could have social media if she wanted to. She could still do X, Y, Z. 100% correct. But They're guess right. what? If somebody wants to break into my house, I got the world's greatest uh, security system. That doesn't mean it's impossible to break in my house, right? Mm -hmm. If my girl is going to cheat, she'll find a way. That doesn't mean I have to make it easy. Yeah, right. Just because I know that that guy could get into my house no matter what I do doesn't mean I'm going to leave the door unlocked. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. If Devin gets away with cheating, you better believe she's going to earn that extra sausage. <laughs> and and you have to make it you have to make it so difficult before you commit that she has a choice to make. She can say I can either jump through all of the hoops that that comes with taking the side sausage or I can just tell Donovan that I want out of the relationship. You know what she's going to do? Whichever is the easiest. And it better not be the cheating. You have to make cheating more difficult than it is to be straight up with you. So again, that is about, well, you're, nope, that's not controlling your woman. That is controlling your environment and giving her a choice. And if coming and being straight with you is easier than cheating, guess what she's going to do? She's going to be, hey, Donovan, you know what? Yep. Not really feel it anymore. All right, well, I guess we'll go our separate ways. That's how that goes. Um, Dr. Uh, P.H. Darian. $5 says, what's up, Don, Dev, and Coach, and the Coach Gang? About to get dragged through family court myself and pick myself up. Keep pushing. Best collab. Man, I feel sorry for guys like that, but keep pushing, man. 2,700 people watching. That is a one-on-one -on -one with Donovan Sharp record. Uh, David Enrique Rodriguez says, shout out to the Coach Gang. Every man watching this is about to go Super Saiyan 4. This one-on-one -on -one is going down in the history books the best yet. I agree with that because this, this has been unbelievable. Chris Von Eric, another $5, says, Don and Coach Greg, women in a time of crisis will happily adopt the victim persona. What are your thoughts on women who are always, I am woman and I'm independent, this, that, and the other, but as soon as the you-know-what hits the fan, they're all victims. Um, I mean, I wrote the entire book, The Evolution, just to outline all the victimhood status things that they can choose from. Right. It, it's there for them. It's available for them even more than it was in the past. Just know it's coming and you just don't know when. But you what, what you do have control over is you have the ability to absorb when that's coming. Right. right? So you right. can be like, OK, I know this blow is coming, but it's the guys who don't understand this that they can adopt the victim, that women are going to be a victim at some particular right. point. It's right. all, no, not her, not all women are, and I'm like, you're the fool at that particular <laughs> point. I look, you can be a fool and right. not believe that, but I saw my ex-wife in family court. Right. I saw her. Right. I knew this woman for 10 years. Wow. Never would have imagined that she would ever pull the stuff that she pulled. Man. So, and, 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 every, and, and the whole world sees her. She's so nice. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I would never think she would do anything like that. What did you do? You must have done something. Right, 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 right. I was sitting there like, bro, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> she, got the, she got the judges, the lawyers, the bailiff, the family court. She got everything oh, yeah, at, her, right. uh, at, her, at her reach to do whatever she wants. Yeah. I don't. And just understand that that's what they have. Accept it. God. See, acceptance is an important it is. stage for men. It is. Because we hope. And this is for my guys that keep asking me, what if I want to have kids? You wish, 
and and you just want to be blue pilled. You can't wait for the woman to fall in love with you. That's right. Wow. You can't wait for the woman to say, "You're my. I've waited for you all my life. I've dreamed of you, and <laughs> you make me wet every night. And I want to do marital missionary with you. You want that? And let me tell you guys, don't exist. Wow. It don't exist. Now you're gonna get it temporarily. She's yeah. gonna show you oh, all yes. of that. She limited time only. She's gonna limited time only. Now at some point she's gonna drive like the Sahara Desert. All right. That's a, that's a particular <laughs> that's point. That's right. That's right. When she drives up or she finds the bigger Johnson or the bigger money mm-hmm. or what, whatever she wants and she's just tired of you, then you're going to see the side of her that you never seen before. Jesus Christ. That's man. just the game you play. You know, acceptance, uh, you said, is the key. And there are a lot of, there's black pill guys. Mm-hmm. Those, see, black pill guys, those guys haven't accepted anything. They're still they're they're merely stuck in the anger phase. They are pissed off. They want, uh, they want uh, uh, mon- they want forced monogamy. They want monogamy to be legislated and this and that and the other. Listen, even if we were to snap our fingers right now and make monog and, and make cheating illegal, guess what? Women would still cheat. Right. There's nothing you can uh, you listen and dude. People take away women's rights. Take away women women's rights to vote. Listen, those are guys interested in controlling women, and I understand why because women, when left to their own devices, are very destructive. You understand? Right. You give women sole control over anything, they destroy it themselves, their children. <laughs> just uh, just dude, the, uh, the dating market, <laughs> anything they have control over, they are destructive. But yeah. That's not the day and age that we live in. It's going to have to all burn to the ground for it to be fixed. And I don't see that. I don't know. We it might are, happen in my lifetime. We are not going to see the courts flip in favor of men. Nope. We're not going to see laws against women. Now, women think that they the, the politicians make laws against women. Not, but what you're saying is they're making laws against destroying yourself. Yes. So, yes. Um, yeah. But guys, if you're in the anger stage. And you've been in it for more than three months, six months. Bro, you are doing a disservice to yes, yourself. That's right. My my leap to this next level, free agent lifestyle, was when I removed the anger. There you go. This, when I actually could stop looking at women, you know, because when you're angry, you're looking at them. Everything oh, they do, pissed. you piss oh, yeah. the hell off. Look oh, at yeah. her flip her hair. You piss. Right, you know right, right, right. Why she look so her. damn good? Look, look, I mean, yeah, it's yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. She, look at these bras and yoga pants. You, right. You mad at everything they do. At that, at some particular point when I said, I'm going to write off, the, the, she means nothing to me because you know what? She ain't even thinking of me. Right. When I right. realized that that girl over there ain't even thinking of me, I was like, damn. Yeah, that's she, when you figure it out. That's when I figure it out. I was like, why am I mad at her and she ain't even looking at me? See, you know? I never see this is the weird thing, man, is I never I never went through the anger phase, man. Mm. The the long story short, um I touched down in Vegas July 10th, 2010, got a job at a call center, hooked up with this big ample boobed Mexican girl, a five at best. <laughs> And so we actually started dating and three weeks in, I was like, dude, this is just, dude, she had a snot nosed kid. She was a bad mom. Her place was always dirty. Oh, it was, it was terrible. So, you know, I went to her house and I was like, listen, this isn't working out. We need to break up. She said, okay. And I was like, all right, cool. I got the hell out of there. Cause I thought I was maybe being set up, but I remember on the way home, I was like, dude, this girl told me she loved me a week ago. Why was she indifferent to that? So I went on and I Googled, why do girls get over breakups so easily? The rest is history. But I wasn't angry. And I think the reason why I wasn't angry is because a lot of us realize that we've been red-pilled our entire lives. And I say that Susie, she's the woman that red-pilled me. No, the woman that really red-pilled me was my mother. I didn't realize it at the time I found the red pill, but a lot of the things... I guess that's probably why I got so good with game and women very quickly because I had a front row seat to the way women really were. And I just didn't realize it. I, and I guess I had been angry at my mother all those years. That was probably my version of the anger phase. So I guess that's how that was. Uh, Dizzy D hundred dollar super chat man says, appreciate the brothers who saved me from the simp life. Love to see my mentors collaborating. Keep up the amazing content. Red pill, Mike, another $5 super chats chat says, quote, what if I want to have kids? Answer, how is having kids going to improve the quality of life better than any success-seeking action? Um, this is the interesting thing, and, and um, some people out there say chase excellence, but the thing is, man, is that men, we are genetically predisposed to want to spread our seed. Mm-hmm. I feel like it is very, and this is one of the sobering realities of taking the red pill. You have to train yourself. Feminism, the girl power movement has trained women to literally go against their programming. 
And so in order to be successful with women, we have to go against our programming. Yes. And that includes, listen, you're going to have to understand having kids is a no-win situation. What's your thoughts on that, man? Well, they, they not only go against their programming and we not only go against ours, they go against ours. Mm-hmm. The modern woman is basically telling you right now, I'm bringing zero to this party. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm bringing zero. I'm focusing on myself, but you're going to accept it. I mean, they're literally telling you that and you guys Dude. are still in this hopeful stage. In today's day, the the having the child, oh, um, God. and and it look the statistics tell you most kids grow up uh, in a single parent household. Yes, even even if you go in, even That's if right. you get married and divorced, at some particular point they live with either one parent or the other. There you go, or they go back and forth in a suitcase. Right. Okay. So, I mean, is this what you want to bring in? Is this what you want? Do you just want to bust another inside of a woman and then see if she can produce for you? I get it. That's that's pretty, you know, that's a that's a thing that wakes you up and there go, you wow, go. That's impressive. I did that. If that's if that's what you want, well then you'll get that. But you're inheriting the uh the statistics that you're not going to be in that kid's life. Ooh, you're wow. more often not then go, you're more often not going to be in that kid's life than you are. And even the men that are in their child's life right now, they don't even have authority or mm, value mm, over, mm. That, over that child. The woman runs the roost. You're the hand-pecked husband. That's she right. tells you what to do to raise the kid. So I'm saying 90% chance that you're not going to be the leader of that kid. That's right. That's where we are right now. The sobering reality of having children today in 2020 is – you can have kids, but it's a ma- it's a damn near mathematical certainty that your kids will not belong to you Absolutely. at some point. Yep. You can have kids, but you won't have children. No, that's so right. That's, that's, that's exactly that right. Yeah, yeah, you can have kids, but you won't have children. That's exactly <laughs> right. Um, a dev, uh, somebody, I was actually supposed to ask this a little bit sooner uh, about the whole victim uh, mentality. We actually had somebody on YouTube ask this question uh, a little bit earlier. What was that? What can high value alpha and sexually dominant men do to protect themselves from false allegations? So that's the victim mentality, right? I actually saw I saw something that you posted yeah. about the girl saying if a man has sex with a woman and he knows that he doesn't intend to commit to her, then that's non consensual consensual. What? Oh, that's crazy. Okay. That was crazy. When I saw that, I was like, and I had I said, let me tweet, let me put this it's on everything. Nuts. I said, right now, guys. You're in a situation where their agency to the state is way more valuable than you. That's right. And at any point, the hamster wheel runs in their little brain. All right, all right. Okay. And they can come up with anything today. And if you haven't learned from the Me Too movement, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, oh my God. To me, that to me is a future Me Too case. Yes. Yes, it is. Because she can reach back any oh year God. and go, dang, okay, this guy. Because watch, these women are watching you after you break up. Right. Oh, he got married to that girl. I can't believe that. Well, he said he didn't want a relationship with me. Now, he married her. She going to make you pay Oh my God, for dude. doing that, and they can do it. See, dude. that's what you don't understand. We disagree with this stuff, but these things that they're coming up with now, they can do it. Like, what kind of logic? Like, <laughs> that is so, – so the fact that when he had biblical relations with you, you can say that you had – you can say that you wanted to be with him – but because he didn't end up with you and in the back. So basically what she's doing now is reading your mind, right? How do you know he had no intention of being with you, you right? But just like you said, their agency to the state, much more valuable. So the state will take her word for it. You thought that he had had sex with me in bad faith, your honor, and that's why it was non-consensual. Can you, Im- dude, and I can dude, imagine something like that these happening. these women will have, and then a judge or your attorney will say, well, you had sex with him 50 times after that. Oh, well, oh, it doesn't matter. The one, t- but there was a case of somebody. Uh, I don't know if it was an athlete. Well, in one of the sexual relationships that they had, mm-hmm. he did anal with her, mm-hmm. and I don't know if she agreed or not. But they had continued to have sex. Well, when they got to court, he 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 was charged with that one a- that that was the grape that they caught. But they had continued a relationship. But then she charged him with rape for that you one, gotta be bro. So me. what I'm saying is. These women, you can continue a relationship with them. Well, they'll go back because they'll keep a diary on February. 13th, <laughs> yes, they will. Yes, right? they will. On February thirteenth, twenty seventeen, and you can be like, "But we were together for three years after that, and we were just friends with benefits." Dude, they're putting you in a corner man. with the legal system. And listen, when I hear when I hear stuff like that, this is where I say, "Listen, man, I don't really, I'm not, I don't agree with the black pill guys because they are." Scorched earth and all this other kind of stuff. 
Those guys just don't want to accept that the sexual marketplace is what it is. It sucks. It's not fair. But these are the times we live in. But any guy who says, you know what? I'm done with women. I can't. I can't. I can't say I blame him, man. Right. I can't say I blame him with that kind of. That's just that's incredible, man. Um, Super Chat still rolling in. AJ Taylor, five dollars says a lot of men cannot accept female nature because it speaks to their own insecurities as it pertains to dealing with women. This is actually true on both sides. The guys who like to complain, well, she only goes after guys who are in shape, says the guy who is lazy and <laughs> overweight. She only goes for rich guys, says the guy who is not motivated to be better with his money. Right. What's well, the same with women? He only likes women who are fit, says the fat girl who eats pizza at 10 o'clock every night. Mm -hmm. So I agree with that. Men who can't accept the fact, it's not bad. Women can't love men unconditionally, Greg. If they did, we our offspring would be lumps of crap, right? Yeah, right like, I mean, yeah. imagine if a woman loved you unconditionally, right? Yeah. Let's just say you have crappy genes and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're short, you're fat, whatever the case may be. And you don't have like, you don't have like money-making abilities, whatever the case may be, because here's the thing. Rich men have shown in, have shown a financial aptitude. So he's not the best looking guy, but he made his fortune. So he's got something up here that has helped him reach this status. That's why that's important to women. But a lot of guys need to understand that, okay, so you're not, you know, you're ripped, you're rich, whatever the case may be. You have to accept that women are like this. If not, women have to choose the best genetic specimens to procreate with. That's what they do. Right. Listen, do. my father, he wasn't like, dude, my dad was a, dude, he was as, he was as weak as all get out. But guess what? He passed his good physical genes on to me. I'm 6'2", my brother is 6'4", my youngest brother is 5'11", or my youngest brother is only 5'10", but he's, he's like a Hulk. Okay, that's how that is, man. Women have, dude, women are genetic, they are pr genetically predisposed to seek out the best possible specimens. That's what you got to do. That's what you have to accept. We got to accept that now. Yes. I think guys that want uh, the law or society to continue to make, you know, make laws and, and standards to keep men in line. I mean, yes. to keep them in line. Yes. Well, then that that's, tan that's telling us that you don't have enough to keep them in line. There you right? go. So there you go. if you keep reaching out saying, let's change the law so that this, well, you have to make something about yourself able to control them because there you the go. law's not going to do it. Nope. But I think what, what guys have to accept, again, is you're always going to have a shortcoming. Yes. There's guys, I mean, I'm short, you're tall. I mean, I think people will look at it and say, well, that is, um, that's a disadvantage for me. But I would say, well, that's a disadvantage for him because he had to have every five, four, three, two, one throw themselves at you <laughs> simply because you're tall, right? I dodged that bullet, right? right I dodged right. that bullet. I yeah. have to not deal with as many toxic, toxic, toxic women as you did, right? Right. Um, but there's guys that you know their vision isn't straight. You know they they walk with a limp. These things I mean, matter, dude. They, they matter, and we have to accept it. I can't. You know, we can't keep getting angry at evolution. Right. right. We want a fit woman who's young and fertile. Right. That's how we're programmed. Society's trying to tell us that these 50 year old women are, you know, 48 to new 25. Look, <laughs> oh, and, and now it's 48. Yeah, 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 oh, now it's 48. Oh, 48 to new. Day. And, and they can try to trick us with all this bo body positivity. At the right. end of the day, right. we like young, fertile junior college freshmen or graduating sophomores. There and that's go. what I want. So um, within that, within that. We continue. We we have to understand that women are going to be mad at us for that. Yep. Because they can't control it. Same thing as you though. Um, if you're short, your vision's blurry or something like that. However, some of the other things, status, the controllables, the controllables, the controllables. Yeah. That's where we have the advantage. There we go. We have a significant advantage because all of a sudden I could take three years off the marketplace, fix my entire damn life. That's right. And then less I can than write, that. Yeah, less than that. And I can write off 50% of the woman coming back. Bingo. Right? There they is. can't do it. No. They cannot do it. And they're going to run out of time when they do it. You can't turn back the clock. And they, that's yeah, the advantage we have, dude. Significant. It's, it's so funny. I'll, I'll look at pictures of myself in my 20s. I'm not, I wasn't like, I wasn't an ugly guy, but I, dude, this is the most attractive I've ever been in my life. And I'm 43 years old, right? You can't say that about the average 43 year old woman. It can't say that about possible. Michelle, the Uber driver, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. She was a good looking woman, but I guarantee she doesn't look years as ago, good. Bro, 20 years ago, she Yo. probably was a smoke show. Straight up. You know what I'm Straight saying? Up. And she did nothing to do it, oh right? She God, just woke dude. up, went to sleep, woke up, went yeah, to sleep. Now it is. she ran out of time. And for men, if you really want to change it, 
and understand we have the advantage in this situation. Mm. Stop listening to these overweight women. <laughs> Try to change your mind. Right. Just disregard their asses right, right, right. and focus on what you need to focus on. And today, 60% of women are fat. Yep. Like obese. We're talking about yes. obese. Yes. Not, just, not just out of shape. We're talking about they're out of the realm of possibility of being a qualifier. All right? I'm comfortable with that. Right. I'll just walk out of the street with that. I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be mad that she tells me uh, I'm body shaming her. Right. Don't matter. I yeah. have way more authority over you. The right next now. time uh, a fat woman body shames you in public, yeah. just kind of look at her and be like, how do you wipe your ass? <laughs> yeah, right. Right? Like, how does yeah. that work? Like, right? let me know. You Especially people, how do you nails. people? Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> That's what I've always wondered. You ever seen these? I mean, I know this is getting off, but those super long nails, yeah. I've wondered this since I was a kid. Like, how do they handle their? Right. And the, the the fat women always got their nails done, by the way. Oh, they, oh, their hair and nails going to be on point. point. <laughs> on their point. hair and nail game going to be on point. I swear to God, because they ain't got nothing else. <laughs> nothing else, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how do you wipe your ass? I right. just, I just, that's that's what I want to know. <laughs> Sheldon Ross, $10, says, love the show, guys. Uh, you guys are definitely my two favorite content creators. It's cuffing season. And these 49ers and single mothers are out here trying to lock down everything moving. Stay strong, fellas. Okay, we got uh, 10 more minutes. We'll go through this quickly. Uh, you obviously know what cuffing season is. For yeah, those yeah. of you who don't know what cuffing season is, it goes like this. So this is cuffing season. We are November. Cuffing season usually starts the week before Thanksgiving. So we're yes. we're about there now. Yeah. So the week before Thanksgiving, they, they're, they're, they're banging six guys. They hone in on the one they like the most, right? So they lock that guy down. They lock that guy down so they don't have to be alone for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or Valentine's Day. They don't want to have to continue to answer the questions, when are you going to settle down, Angela? Mm -hmm. So they bring their flavor of the year around every, it's always some different guy, right? So after Valentine's Day, he goes super beta. He sends you flowers and you are the apple of my eye that turns her off, right? Well, isn't that a coincidence? Because spring break is just two months away. All the clothes there you go. To come off. So now she starts shaving. She starts giving a damn about how she looks. She goes down to Panama City with her friends. She cheats on you five, six times. She gets back. Yeah, we should start seeing other people. All summer long, she's doing monkey monkey double bath flips on the CCs. At the end of the summer, she's banging five or six guys. She hones in on the one she likes the most, rinse and repeat. So that is cuffing season. Absolutely. Very good. And then you end up becoming a 49er like Michelle, the Uber driver. <laughs> God, I feel well, sorry for her, Well, they do that year after year, and Every then they year. run out of time. You know what I'm and saying? And then before yeah. you know it, you're driving an Uber with a YouTuber <laughs> who's got a channel that literally talks about women like you, and you ask yourself, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. Boy, talk about asking the wrong Dude, guy. Dude, I was sitting there like, She's like, man, do she... you even know who I, like. <laughs> yeah. I was like, if she knew who I was, she wouldn't have, she would wouldn't not have, have had put me in that situation. But, I don't know. She might have put in a bid. Like, real talk. She probably, she was, I think she was putting in the bitch. She, she was probably. looking for a rescue plan, dude. That that's a that's a dangerous woman. Yes, that is like a venomous snake. Yes, she was like the venomous snake because any guy, any guy that that watches us, you would have jumped all over. Oh her. Yeah, 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 you would you would have been like, I'll take that. You would have taken that. Yep. And then yep. guess what? And I and I even told her. I said, you know what? I said, uh, you. I said the problem is, you, you can't have kids. And I'm going through this. And she says. Uh, well, are you concerned about having kids with a 40 to my That is hilarious. Yeah. She's asking you like you're on yeah. a date. Yeah, yo. And, and, wow. And I, said, and I said, I said, yeah, but I said at that point, once you have the kids, because that's what you're looking for, the marriage and the kids, I was like, after you have them, I'm disposable. And she was like, huh? What? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She, like like she you, never Michelle. heard of a divorce. Come yeah, on, Michelle. Yeah, yeah. Like she never heard of a divorce. But the problem is most guys, they'll be like, oh, she looks so nice. I don't think she'll ever do that to me. <laughs> God. And then you mistake. end up in court. And then you end up in court. Trying to flex on the bailiff <laughs> yeah, with right. that masculine frame. <laughs> the bailiff puts you in the cobra clutch. <laughs> Yo, those bailiffs are some big motherfuckers, big dudes, man. Big, big dudes. dudes yes. I would do big Popeye chicken eat motherfuckers, right. man. I swear yeah, to God. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix Fats, $5, says, I would like to think, I would like to think uh, enough politicians and media executives have been burned by the GP movement, girl power movement, and that there would be incentive to fix the law and the media. No. Dude, that's too the much girl power money. movement. Oh my god! Yes, yeah, the no. girl power movement is beneficial for the economy. Women yes. make up what seventy percent of the almost eighty. Yeah, they, they yeah, purchase yeah. eighty three. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, why yeah, all yeah, commercials yeah. are geared towards women. No, right. there's no yeah. motivation. No way. Uh, True Black five dollars says, speaking about women and their devices, how do you feel about this? How do you feel this OnlyFans culture will? Do you feel like OnlyFans culture will self destruct? Um, well, there's the more women that join it, mm -hmm. I, they water down the market. So then yep. there's going to be more frustrated only fan there you go. account holders. The problem is, you know, that's an easy disqualifier for you. Oh, yes. Never had it. yes. I mean, that's a red flag. So, yeah. Yeah. Real talk. Um, if I were, if I were ever to meet uh, a girl who had a, uh, an only fans account, 
Um, and a lot of people ask, well, what if what if you were on a date with a girl who had an OnlyFans account? Uh, well, that depends on how she looks, right? right, right. And, and I come at it from a, it's almost like from a pimp perspective, right? If, well, and, and eventually girls are going to angle for a long-term relationship if you've got that kind of game. So if I'm dating a girl who has an OnlyFans account or makes money or she's sponsored, makes money on the way she looks, I want to be your girlfriend or where is this thing headed? Uh, no, you don't want to be in a relationship with a guy. Well, why not? Well, because then I need a cut of what you're making on OnlyFans, and mm. I don't get I don't get the idea that you're trying that you're, not, that you're trying to give some of that up, right? Right? Yeah. So if she does this, if you commit to her without getting a piece of that OnlyFans, and that's on you, you have to pimp her out, guys. Right. If a, if a girl has an OnlyFans account wants to be in a relationship with you, you need to demand seventy percent. That'll keep her away. Well, surely she's gonna make you take videos and photos. So that's right. Probably, so get, I'm getting right. Yeah, I need to get my portion. You know so, what I'm saying? Right, hey, yeah. listen. Oh, I'm just texting. No, listen. You're texting your OnlyFans guys. Listen, flirt with them, show them the booty pics, <laughs> all of that. Make that money, girl. You're only lying in my yeah, pockets. Exactly. Yeah, that's the, that's the kind of the tech you have to take with these people. Uh, Iron Monkey ten dollars has two of my favorite red pillars. Keep broadcasting this truth. Ray Iriate five dollars. Medinaha five euros says. Imagine you left everything you've built and your woman. And had to start all over again. How would you feel about it? The same question for Mr. Sharp. Man, I did that. I mean, I left. Right. I literally left my marital home, which I don't advise people to do legally. Right. But I literally packed my stuff into my Ford Explorer, lived on, in my car for wow. six months wow. until I had enough money to get into a studio apartment. Holy I left moly. everything behind. Jesus and Christ! Started so my life it. over at age. I want to say thirty six. It's right, the best decision you ever made. Best decision I ever made because, <laughs> dude, I mean, I was like, dude, it, that's, that's stuff you can replace. Of course. And it takes a stuff. while to replace spoons and forks and all of this stuff. Yeah, right. Like, man, dude, you're going to do it. And because men have the capacity to do it. Yes. She doesn't. And this is why they she scratch doesn't. and claw for every exactly. penny. Women can't take L's. They can't, they can't. They're not designed to do it, man. Yes. Wow, I didn't know that that, was, uh, that, that had happened that was to you. That was the result. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, Albatross Flight. Five dollars says so glad I caught you two on my lunch break. Appreciate that. Uh Zer Hidamaru, uh twenty dollars says black pilled guys are the kinds of guys that complain about the friend zone because they want the results of an alpha without the work. Mm. They're under the same entitlement as women and refuse to better themselves. Real talk. Somebody on YouTube asked a question, says, Ask ask Coach Greg Adams what he thinks about the black pill and will you ever debate a black pillar? No. Black pillars don't want to debate. They tell you they want to debate. They don't want to debate. They want to argue. They just want to use your platform to get more eyeballs on them. Guys, seriously, go bleep yourselves. Like, nobody's debating you. Like, you guys aren't interested in debate. You guys aren't interested in truth. Truth. You guys just want to argue. And I'm, I don't argue. I don't argue with women. I don't care about that. Um, <laughs> Red Pill Mike. Now, I've just given them content Not for, like, mad. the next. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Donovan Sharp talks about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Listen, make the money. Do what you got to do. Red Pill Mike, $5, says, early movement started with so-called good intentions, always reveals the radical mindset. Uh, OOT them is basically, oh, wait a minute. Oh, he put that backwards. Hashtag also me is basically criminalizing courting in general. Yeah, that's exactly right. You can't, dude, mm -hmm. any workplace, you uh, you ever watch First Take? Yes. yes, yes so yes. Molly Kiram is now oh, married yes. to Jalen Rose, right? Yes. That marriage is simply a, a hashtag also me case that didn't get reported. That's all that was. That's all that was, right? Right. right. Like, uh, of yes. course Jalen Rose yeah. tried to holler at her. Look at her. But she could have she could have had him by the ball. She ended up marrying him. Well, a lot of those women did the same thing to uh, Marshall Falk. And uh, yep. there was another, like, the makeup artist, right? She mm. was the makeup artist, and she was, you know, getting plowed by a couple of NFL <laughs> players. And then she didn't get what she wanted. She aged out, and then she had to take a couple guys. There you go. Them, so, yeah. That's what, she, that's what they do. Yep. Um, EZW334, $5, says, I'm so grateful that I found you guys' channel. They changed my life for the better, especially for a guy who lives in Vegas. Appreciate that. BGI B-Ramp said, $10 said, had something like that happen. As soon as I got my business up and going, she watched me grow it to great success and wanted to cash in any way she could. Even say a child was mine that wasn't. I swear to God, man. Eternity for all is not illegal, by the way. <clears throat> it should be. Right. I mean, should that's be, a big man. one. But that just tells you what power you have. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, so. yeah. Unbelievable. Um, last few super chats here. Halo strike $5 CGA. Stop dunking on these buzzer beaters. Hopes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He rode with a buzzer beater on the yeah. way over here. Dude, she's 43. She's tireless. And you want to know what the sad thing is? Somebody out there is going to be that parachute. Somebody out there is going to be that parachute, man. And whew, well, that's the know. advantage they have. They can, they can hope for a winning lottery ticket at any point and they'll, they'll get it. 
Well, they'll, they'll, they'll get kind one. of get it. Well, well, well they'll, they'll kind get of get it. Yeah. Th- this is the thing. Like, we always say women hit the wall and this and that and the other. And, oh, they can't. Listen, there are plenty of men who will wife up a 43-year-old Uber driver who has nothing to bring to the table but <laughs> right. her aging looks, right? right. But it's not going to be the man she wants, right? Like, guys it like you and me, we'd smash, man. but I'm not committing to that, I right? Take it. I wouldn't take it at all. So, But it, there's somebody that's going to take that. There you go. And it's but not, not going to be the man she wants. Not right. the man she exactly. wants. That's right. Yes, yes. Men win. Uh, Mirza Kudit. Uh, says, my ex and I broke up three months ago, and even though I've been with six other women, I still can't stop thinking about her. Even when I go to places like Vegas, I am stuck on her. Advice, please, keep sleeping with other women. Six months is not long enough to get over an ex. What's your advice? I mean, I tried to do that. I did the whole sleeping with other women, but <laughs> I mean, sleeping with more women. But I think what happens is you're you're trying to keep up with her numbers. Like, <laughs> lots of, and you That's never going to happen. Oh, no. Gonna, yeah. And so he's compiling these bodies. And as he's busting <laughs> this nut and he's roaring all up in her, the first thing he thinks about is instead of that woman, he's thinking about what his girlfriend's doing. Woo, and man. guess what? That's what she it is. That's why I can't get over it. it. That's why I can't. <laughs> <laughs> because he knows she's getting piped down, too, right man, now. Man, I'm the trying moment. to tell you. So um, what he needs to do, he, he needs to move. Six months? Six months. It's going to take him another six months. Yes. Right? Dude, it's, just it's just that's time. That's the reality. Of, but that's what happens when you get emotional with these yeah. people, dude. That's, the, that's just what Woo. you do. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's thinking. He's like, man, I'm smashing these broad. Listen, she will always have, women will always get 10 times more sausages than you will ever have tacos. You can never real talk. This is why I tell guys that get into open relationships, like with their married wife. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, bro, she going to run so much pipe in there. Man. You cannot compete. Nope. You can't compete, and she ain't going to help you. So nope. Good no, luck. she's definitely not going to help you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ralphie, $5, says, PUAs boast about sleeping with women, but in reality, they get with busted Pillsbury biscuit cans. <laughs> um, I used to be a PUA, and I didn't get with busted <laughs> Pillsbury. This guy, Ralphie, he's actually a good supporter of mine. Dude, you're being a hater. You're being a hater. PUAs have receipts for days, man. Like, I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why anybody would make fun of anybody who sleeps with a lot of women. I know that women aren't everything, but... Let's not be. I would say players do. Pl- players have the the. You know, I'm gonna sleep. I sleep with all eights and okay. nines and tens. No, but, but yeah, dude, yeah, nobody yeah. sleeps with yeah, all eights not, and nines not every and tens. Day, exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah, that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, but yeah, not yeah. Pillsbury. Come on, I like I like Pillsbury as much as the next guy. But come on, let's let's be let's not be disingenuous. James Young, five dollars says this qualifier number seventeen makes money outside of a job or vis- or business, e.g., only fans. Uh, James Young, five dollars says did the same as coach at age twenty six. I slept in my office, found an apartment the next day. Nonstop Dre 360, this is the last super chat, says, What will government do with what will the government do with all the spinsters? What's gonna happen when all when Michelle the Uber driver and everyone in her generation what happens when they turn 65, man? Dude, that is that that was why I wrote the book The Evolution. Woo! It's going to collapse. They man. cannot support, but see the, the deal that they're making is with the devil because they need their vote. Yes. They need these women's vote, right? Yes, they do. And they they key in on these women and they tell them, We're gonna help you pay off your student loan, we're gonna provide welfare for you, they're gonna do all of these things, right? That they know is gonna run out of money, right? <sighs> we're gonna have you access to child support. That's gonna just drain the social security administration. So when these women are out here going, Hey, government, I can't find I'm forty three year year old Uber driver, what can I do? <laughs> All right, you made me vote for you for five elections. Oh my god! Now what? Dude. And now, I mean, we're here now, dude. Look at our economy, dude. We're here. This is it. This, this is, is listen, it. so so so. Listen, man. In twenty forty. In 2040, the Michelle, Michelle, the Uber driver. Um, unfortunately, Michelle, you're going to be the poster yeah, child for this. <laughs> Michelle, the 43 year old, good looking Uber driver. She's going to be there. All these women are going to be like, okay, you've helped us out this long. Yep. And the government is not going to let these women fall by the wayside. And they're going right. to end up taking it out of our pockets. That's you watch right. and see. That's they're going to start taxing you based on your gender. Mm. If you are a man, you're going to get taxed more than women. If that's not happening already. It's kind of already happening. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Uh, Greg, listen, man, this was a blast, dude. Um, we've been on the air for two hours. It doesn't even it feel like feel that like, long. Yeah, I'm like, what are we shutting down for? We can keep it going. Well, yeah, yeah, we've got I a dinner reservation at 530. And, you, uh, yeah. and listen, you can tell um, I, I woke up hungry today. Um, thank you guys very much for all of your super chats. This was an incredible, incredible showing. I think we are still, I'm going to check here. I think we're probably still monetized, but I'm going to keep this up because the only swear words that came out of, out of either one of us was for me and YouTube expects that from me. So I think that we're going to, I think I'm going to keep the green dollar sign up. Um, I normally never, I usually take these down immediately, but I think you, uh, I think having you on the show, I think helps me with the algorithm. So I'm going to leave this one up guys. Um, This is the final, uh, this is the final episode of one-on-one with Donovan Sharp. Uh, this is the season finale, uh, season two of one-on-one with Donovan Sharp, probably going to start right around the end of January. So this is the closeout show. So, 
Uh, many thanks to all of my guests, Myron Gaines, Terrence Pop, Steve the Dean Williams, Mr. Lacario, Kevin Samuels, Solo TV 84, C Boogie. Uh, who else was on there? Da, 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 da. Aaron. Yes, Minister Jap. Thank you to him. Aaron Clary. Aaron Clary. There you go. And, of course, uh, Coach Greg Adams. Thank you guys very much. Um, we will see you guys, uh, I guess, uh, end of January, early February, uh, next time on One on One with Donovan Sharp. I will be back on the air tomorrow at 6 o'clock with one, uh, Weights and Dates with Myron Gaines, followed by the 6 uh, with my six guys. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.